for the renewal of a rivalry that began 100 years ago at the Columbia Fairgrounds in front of a slightly more modest crowd. Clemson at 7-3, 6-2 in the ACC, hoping to extend a rather significant lead in the series, but as we said, the road team, strangely enough, has won the last five. Last year, Clemson big at Columbia, 38-17 with a 21-point fourth quarter burst. Tigers have won the toss, they defer, and Matt Padgett is set to kick it off to the Gamecocks. Who have Terry Cousin deep alongside Boo Williams. And the Padgett kick down to the goal line where Cousin heads left, cuts back, and finds some room. Now finds himself on a foot race and chased out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Not a bad return to start things off for South Carolina with a 5-5 five and five mark, 4-4 four and four in SEC play. Anthony Wright, sophomore from Vanceboro, North Carolina, fifth in the conference in passing and total offense. Marcus Robinson, a big target, 6'4". He's got 19 catches, averages 24 yards per catch. Jamar Nesbitt will have his hands full today with Trevor Price and Clemson. He's got some big hands, though. 6'5", 303, just a sophomore at left tackle. And Cox out of the eye on first down and right with play action. Sacked at the 22 by Price. The transfer from Michigan struggled early on, but over the last couple of games, he has been outstanding. Only six starts thus far in the season. 14 tackles for loss, and now his sixth sack of the season. That young man has put on a tremendous pass rush for the Tigers, particularly in the last four games. Lawson officially six, call it seven, and it's second down and 17. First carry of the day for Deuce Staley. They welcome him back after almost a month rehabbing that ankle. Andy Ford makes the tackle for the Clemson defense. Much improved. Trevor Price, we've already seen. They looked at him as maybe the second coming of Michael Dean Perry here. Anthony Simmons, last year the UPI Freshman of the Year, first defender ever to win that award. They're leading tackler both his seasons here. They've got identical twins, Peter and Andy Ford, heading up the secondary. Staley good for eight to the 31, where it's third and nine for Carolina. And right dropping back to the shotgun. Protected well, now it breaks down, and the second sack ball is loose, and the Gamecocks appear to fall on it at the 28. Might have been wrestled free at the last second, but it is South Carolina's ball to punt away. Adrian Dingle, the Tiger defender, who is shaken up, the bandit outside linebacker. Clemson runs a stunt in the middle, enabling him to get free. They have to double-team Price and looping in to make the play. At the last minute, right there, getting a piece of it is number 52. That, that is Dingle, and Dingle is in pain. You can see as a result of the arm tackle and trying to bring down right, that put an extraordinary amount of pressure on his shoulder. Take a look at the end and watch. Watch right here. Now look at the tug on the right, and, and then right there, the pressure falls on his shoulder as Price ends up nailing right, right on top of that shoulder. That's got to be some pain both in the rib cage area as well as the shoulder for Dingle. So as he's helped off, the putter on for the Gamecocks, Courtney Levitt, prized to recruit a true freshman from Germantown, Tennessee. He will also handle the kicking for Carolina. And a beauty. Sails this one all the way back near the 20, where Dexter McLeon's return goes backwards still to the 16. 47 yards on the Levitt punt, minus seven on the return. You know, as you pointed out, Levitt is the guy who was who everybody's All-American, but thus far has struggled in the kicking game. Neyland Green, Jr. from Yonkers, New York, will throw to a pretty good set of skill people. Emory Smith is uh, the brother of Emmett, a big fullback, a little bit different player than Emmett. Jamie Trimble, just 236, the lightest starting center in the ACC. And he'll be banging on some 280, 290 pounders up front for the Gamecocks. 
who moved before the snap. Henry Taylor, 90, the defensive tackle, as you see Dingle head toward the Clemson locker room. Got to be frustrating for the young man who gets a big play and then has to go off and take a look and see what the problem is. Hopefully it's not serious. So Taylor guilty of offsides. South Carolina's defense in their last game held Danny Werfel. Maybe this year's Heisman winner to just 11 of 34 through the air. They've had some outstanding games this year. Held Vanderbilt to 82 total yards. Auburn to just 71 rushing yards. They've got a great ground attack. So times this year they have really risen to the occasion. First man through for limited yardage, and that is Emory Smith, the senior from Pensacola, Florida. Check the Carolina defense now, and Taylor... Having a great year up front. He's their sack leader with three, 285-pounder from Barnwell, South Carolina. The linebackers, headed by Darren Hambrick. His brother, Troy, plays uh, some tailback behind Staley. He has really upgraded their speed at the linebacker spots. Arturo Freeman at free safety, their leading tackler on the year with 90. A lot of range for a second-year starter. Raymond Priester breaking tackles on his first carry of the day. He might go. He did go 65 yards before Lee Wiggins chased him down inside the 10. Great job by the offensive line. Priester sees the gap. When you're back there six, seven yards, you can afford the luxury of seeing what's happening in front of you. Arm tackles on the part of South Carolina, and that's just not going to get it done on the 230-pounder. As you pointed out, right here about on the 20, the bear jumps on his back, and he's able to be dropped at the nine-yard line. Priester gets the call and takes it to the five on what was first and goal. Raymond Priester, the only back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher in Clemson's long and proud football history. Brought down by Ben Washington. Priester, their third all-time leading rusher. Now nearing 2,800 for his career. And he's just a junior out of Allendale, South Carolina. But with that one carry, he just passed Terry Allen. And those of you who don't know who Terry Allen is, pretty decent running back for the Washington Redskins, leading the NFL in touchdowns. Pretty good company. Again out of the eye, second and goal. And Smith, touchdown. Sucker play, take a look in the middle. Everybody is going with the flow, which is Priester. He's got, Smith has about a four-yard head start before anybody gets a hand on him into the end zone for a very easy touchdown. Matt Padgett for the extra point. And for a 7-0 Clemson lead. Emory Smith, a great history of bedeviling the Gamecocks. He's averaged almost seven yards per carry in his career against them, and he has the Tigers on top. Let's check in with Mike Adamley. Dave and Todd on this day of rivalries, one of the most heated ones being contested in Pasadena. UCLA winners of five in a row over USC trailing because Brad Otten just hit Chris Miller. It is now 31-14. Trojans need to beat the Bruins and Notre Dame next week to finish over 500. Guys? John Robinson needs that game. Apparently well on his way to getting that game. UCLA's beaten them, what, five straight? They've made a habit of it, almost like Michigan and Ohio State. Jacob Bush in the offset eye alongside Staley for the Gamecocks. Right to the air and incomplete. Intended for Zola Davis. But the key play of the drive certainly had to be Raymond Priester's 65-yard gallop. Once again, take a look at his vision, how he's able to see the openings. Wait his turn, go through the arm tackles. One, two, three. Four different arm tackles as he bursts into the secondary. And even though he didn't have the speed to go the distance, certainly the idea of deferring and putting the pressure on the South Carolina offense paid dividends there as Priester goes 65 yards to set up the initial score of the ball game. Second and 10. Big room this time, and it's Staley's turn to get off to the races. Dragged out at midfield. 
Tackled by Andy Ford, 27 yards for Staley. And now that, of course, means that Deuce Staley finally gets over 1,000 yards, needed only 17 to do it. Even though you can see his left ankle might be bothering him a little bit, watch the cut here. Look at the speed of the pursuit of Clemson. He's able to cut back against the grain. And I dare say right there that had he been full, had he been 100%, he might have gone the distance. Or at least might have been a little better race from his standpoint. Ford probably not as fast as he looked chasing down Staley. But he nailed him at midfield. This is Troy Hambrick who has been holding down the tailback job in Staley's absence. Down again to Pam Ward. All right, Dave, very preliminary, that shoulder injury for Dingle. It turns out he has a dislocated left elbow. So needless to say, Adrian Dingle is through for the evening, Dave. Well, that pain written all over his face as he headed off the field, so that is uh, unfortunate news for the sophomore linebacker. Gain for Troy Hambrick of five yards, brings up second and five from the Tiger, 45. Very important here for South Carolina and Brad Scott not to panic. Yes, they get a touchdown. Yes, the momentum's of all the 80,000-plus in the stadium. They're doing a good job staying on the ground, doing the things that they need to with their game plan. Wright gets out where he's dangerous, turns the corner, has the first down and more. 19 yards on the keeper. And again, Andy Ford ranging over from free safety to drag down another big gainer. Brad Scott, the head coach of South Carolina, has his notoriety as well to being the offensive coordinator for Florida State. And over and over again, they ask whether or not Wright compares favorably to Charlie Ward. He says, you know what? I just don't think that's very fair. But certainly right there on that run, you'd have to say that Wright has the potential for some outstanding athleticism, certainly with his feet. It's all he's heard from day one. That comparison, because Scott engineered the fast break offense, which uh, Charlie Ward engineered himself all the way to the Heisman Trophy, the national title three years ago. Carolina not quite at that level. Wright, one of the best in the country, though. This completion will take it down to first and goal, Gamecocks. As Edwards is there to make the stop on Ben Fleming. Ben Fleming, a freshman, hasn't caught too many balls coming into this game, but Wright found that he was open on the out. They double-teamed the hook, finds Fleming in the flat. First down now at the 10-yard line for the Cox. Standing room crowd in Clemson where the Tigers have an early 7-0 lead. 65-yard run on their first possession by Raymond Priester led to a touchdown run by Emory Smith. But South Carolina strikes right back. Right, lets the blitz come in and then throws incomplete. Waited for that pressure to be bearing down on him. But the pass, as Simmons and Wilson had their sights set on him, very short, and it's second and goal. Interesting what they had there. They had basically kind of a tight end delay, trying to let the inside backers come on what's known as the bullets blitz. And Wright, with his athletic ability, backs up and tries to get the tight end in the middle of the field. But the free safeties, or the both safeties for Clemson, rather, weren't having any of it. Interesting play selection here on the 10-yard line for Brad Scott. Calvin Owens in the game, wide right. Davis inside him. Owens in motion. Wright now scrambling for his life. Didn't get rid of it, and he's dragged down at the 20. Big mistake by Anthony Wright as Howard Bartley grabs him. You have to get rid of it over there. Certainly in that situation, he had a wide receiver in the corner of the end zone. You just have to throw it away. Now watch the bottom left of your screen right here. Take a look and you'll see there's going to be a receiver in the picture right there, bottom of the flag. You can't quite see right there. He just needs to get rid of it. Throw it out of the end zone and there's no way it's going to be intentional grounding. Instead, as Brad Scott had pointed out, the young man too often holds the ball too frequently. And in that case, it cost him dearly. So now from the 19, third and goal. It's picked up. Right heading left this time. Inside the five, right, marked out of bounds at about the one-foot line. It's amazing he could get that close and not score. 
Corey Bridges, the wide receiver at 5'7", 164 pounds, actually puts on a terrific block to enable him to get this. Watch, he breaks out a contain, and probably right here he's saying, okay, I'll get in field goal position. But watch him pick up a, watch him pick up a block by Bridges. Bridges gets his man right there at the bottom, right there, and enables him. He can't quite stay in bounds with the left foot. He needed to make the effort there to get in. He could not, and now they're faced with fourth down inside the one. And they're going to go for it. Good decision. Power eye, two tight ends. Staley leaps for the touchdown. And Deuce Staley with maybe the hit of a limp as he heads toward the bench, but he is within a point of tie in the game. Okay, but look at look at where he takes off from. He takes off from the two-yard line, and he's never even touched until he's into the end zone. Outstanding job by the right side of the offensive line. Rubiek, Beckworth, Wheeler, and Lawson push the orange shirts back. What a terrific drive by the Gamecocks. All the momentum in their face, and they drive the distance to the field. So now Courtney Levitt with a chance to tie it. But first whistle. Coaches and trainers uh, want to make sure Staley survived that leap. Well, the Gamecocks march back five, delay a game. I've said this a number of times, Dave. You can tell the magnitude of the star on the team by the number of guys that come over to you when you're hurt. How many times you see offensive linemen or linebackers, one guy comes over, Staley's ankle's a little bit sore, he's surrounded by five or six guys. <laughs> Never fails. Chad Barnhart is the holder. And Levitt splits the uprights for a 7-7 game. Not even halfway through the first quarter. A rivalry living up to its billing so far. Well, double... Come on, Carolina! 7-7, South Carolina and Clemson. With seven minutes, 44 seconds to go, first quarter. Rather cool night, may drop down into the high 30s. Not nearly as breezy as the day was. We uh, were treated to a spectacular autumn afternoon here in upstate South Carolina in the uh, full color. Steve Florio with this kick. It is returned by Sam Zanders. Who reaches the 33? Let's again send you to the studio and Mike Adam. Well, Dave and Todd, Penn State in control of its Fiesta Bowl destiny against Michigan State, but the Spartans rewriting the script. That's Dwayne Goldburn burning it up against the Nittany Lions, 34 yards in all. Penn State trailing now by five. Let me make a point here, if I can, on national television to congratulate Father Mike Adamley, young daughter Alexandra. Good for you and Kim. Hope Kim is everything as well at the house. Way to go, Mike. Tommy West, third-year head coach at Clemson. One and one in this rivalry is the Tiger head coach. Green just overshoots Kenya Crooks. C certainly the key play of the last drive was on third and 20. The great athletic play by Wright scrambling out to his left. Now watch what he does to the linebacker here. He gets out of the pocket. Now take a look as the linebacker comes up and tries to make a play, able to get past him. Watch number 53 just get completely juked. That is Raheem Abdullah, who was just completely fooled. And right there, if he could have got his left foot down, he probably could have scored. Nonetheless, what an outstanding play by Wright. He did a great job manufacturing things in that last drive. High formation on second and ten. First man, look at the room for Smith. Emery bowls his way to the Gamecock 48. Got their touchdown, now he's got 19 more yards. Great job of being creative on the part of Clemson. Once again, basically the same play. Take a look at the right side. Right guard pulls, that makes the linebacker go with him. And as a result, there's the gap created for Emery Smith. Two outstanding runs thus far for number 18 against a defense who obviously is king on Priester. Clemson has built this five-game winning streak by going back to their uh, long-standing favored style, smash mouth football. They can do it with Priester, who carries here to the 44. He goes 230, 6-1, and Henry Smith 241 on a six-foot frame. They didn't start this season particularly well. 
Three losses in their first five. North Carolina, Florida State may be expected. Missouri, not an expected loss, but they've turned it around. And they've been able to grind out, as you see, 240 rush yards per game. Interesting, though, that Tommy West, the head coach, pointed out that one of the reasons for that was the Florida State game. Even though they lost 34-3, to he felt like they competed extremely well, and they knew they could compete with the big boys. And he feels that that was the major reason why they've been able to have this five-game win streak, the confidence that they were able to build against Florida State. First carry of the night for Kelton Dunnikin, who was the backup for both Priester and Smith. Another big runner, 5'11", 210. Career high, 123 yards, including a 54-yard score for him against Virginia. Two touchdowns against NC State, their second leading rusher. And have significant, enough significance there, Dave, once again. Another back who's averaging more than five yards a carry. Play fake, Green wanted the bootleg in trouble and dumps it incomplete in the general area of the tight end, Lamont Hall. First time he has really been pressured tonight. But that's an outstanding job on the part of the defense for South Carolina. Misdirection fake. Sylvester Miller, the defensive end, is not buying any of it. He stays at home, and that forces now the punt on fourth down at the 43. Kevin Laird averages about 37 yards per kick, and he has Corey Bridges waiting at his 10-yard line. For those young people out there that say you got to be huge to play, Corey Bridges, 5'7", 164 pounds. It's not the size of the fight, the dog. Well, you know that one. Better <laughs> catch. Right at the 10. 32-yard kick, but the Gamecocks pinned back deep in a 7-7 game. 7-7 first quarter rivalry weekend continues from the Metrodome coming up next. The Big Ten showdown as Iowa and Minnesota put the pig back in pigskin. They battle for the bronze pig, the Floyd of Rosedale Trophy. Coming up at the conclusion of our game. Jim Wacker hopes to go out a winner at Minnesota. Staley back in in the offset eye. Takes the give from right and goes nowhere. And drive into the big middle guard, Raymond White, as we hear again from Mike Adamley. All right, Dave, Florida State hoping to capitalize in the polls after Ohio State's loss, getting it done against Maryland. Warwick done, that is, a nine-yard burst, made it 34-10 for Warwick. Touchdown in his 15th consecutive game. Looked like he was going to throw that one. Decided to tuck <laughs> it in and say, nah, I'll pad my stats this way. He is something. Second and 10. No gain for Staley. Right on the straight drop for the sideline and Bridges, and it's incomplete. Covered pretty well by Peter Ford. Right, not a particularly high percentage passer, maybe by modern standards. 57% very good. Eight TDs, five interceptions. Last week hurt his percentage a bit. Seven of 18, 114 yards in the loss to Florida. Last five games for this uh, South Carolina team. The only losses have been the clubs that at the time were top ten units. Tennessee, the other one. White with the call at the line. Split backfield on third down. And the Tigers come with a four-man rush. Gets it off way over Marcus Robinson. Nothing doing on those three snaps for Carolina. Brad Scott was hoping that they got they were going to get a situation where they get some seven-man rushes and man coverages because you had the question as to why you'd be doing this on your own 10-yard line. But he didn't get necessarily what he wanted in coverage, and as a, as a result, Wright had to throw it away against his own coverage on third and 10, and now Clemson more than likely is going to have outstanding field position. is rough. Flag is down as McLeon has the fair catch at the 46. 42-yard kick, but they nailed Courtney Levitt pretty good. David appeared that he might have got blocked into it. You see the rush. Abdullah not very happy about it. I'm not sure that the official saw the whole play. Now watch to the left of your screen. Does he get blocked in? Watch the fullback come over and block him. And then as he blocks him, he runs into Levitt. I'm not sure that that should go that way because the, the fullback in that case, number 31, Garrett Taylor, is the one that blocks Abdullah into it. And so in that case, that's something the official needs to see. Evidently, 
Bill Goss felt as if that he could have avoided him, but I really don't see it that way because the fullback knocked him in midair. What's he going to do? See that pretty often, but you usually see that. It seems to me go against the team rushing. It seems to always be up to them no matter what happens to avoid any contact. Watch when the fullback comes over to make the hit. He blocks him. He certainly does. He blocks him into it. Boy, I tell you, that's, that's a tough call on Clemson. Raheem Abdullah, ultra-aggressive redshirt freshman, is the guilty party for the Tigers, so the Carolina Drive still alive from the 25. 4.47 to go, tied up in the first quarter. Staley turns that into a pretty good 7-8 yard pickup. What's a little bit deceptive about Staley is you look at him a little bit short, about 190 pounds, the assumption is he's not very strong. Well, Chris Jones, the linebacker, had him by the upper body with both arms, and Staley ran right through the tackle. Excuse me, 5'11", 207. Never fails. The guys under six feet are going to get angry when you don't give me their inches. So at 5'11", 207, really the ideal physique for a running back, as you and I have documented throughout the year. Those seem to be the guys that are very successful even at the next level, a la Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith that out. And certainly at this level, the other one's rolling up to 1,000, 1,500, sometimes 2,000-yard good numbers. He got eight, second and two, and that should be good for the first. On the, the carry by Steve Mixon, ESPN. Eric Lindros will be back to play in that game. He has yet to play this season. Anthony Wright, first and 10 from his 36. Delay gives. Not much room around the side that time. As Simmons came over to drive Staley out of bounds. Anthony Simmons, 144 tackles, double figures in tackles in every game. The thing that's impressive about this young man is his ability to always be around the ball. Sometimes the number of tackles can be deceptive. You're saying to yourself, well, that means that the other people aren't doing the job. In the case of Simmons now, he will go over 150 tackles tonight, giving him 300 for the season. Tommy West said to us that he feels as if Anthony Simmons could arguably be the best linebacker in Clemson history. And with names like LeVon Kirkland spicing their pass, pretty good company. Second and eight. With three wide outs, out of the shotgun, delay give. And Troy Hambrick is chased down. Simmons on the hunt once more. An update on Michigan State and Penn State now for Mike Adamu. Well, guys, after an Aaron Harris touchdown run put Penn State up by one, they decided to go for the two-point conversion. Watch the catch by Joe Juravicious. Shades of Todd Christensen with the Raiders. But Michigan State is driving. The Lions now lead by three. I haven't seen that catch made since Todd Christensen played. Hey, you know what? I knew I should have mentioned his daughter. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Shotgun again, third and seven for the Gamecocks. Wright sends that one to nobody. He felt big time heat. Once again, the official, the referee, has his back to it. He doesn't see any white shirts. Really, it looked like it just was kind of an awkward throw on the part of Wright. Pass rush for Clemson right in his face. Now, take a look to the left of your screen. Are there any white shirts out there that could catch this ball? I guess they figured that in that case, number 21, Zola Davis, was close enough. So Levitt once again on to kick, and this time the Tigers put on no rush. And Cleon fair catches it at the 27. Watch Sunday Night NFL on ESPN at 8 p.m. Eastern. Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers will be looking to rebound when they tackle Isaac Bruce and the St. Louis Rams. We hope you can join Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann from the Trans World Dome in St. Louis. Maybe the Packers still hot about that last field goal by the Cowboys on the Monday night. Tommy West hot about what he thought should have been. Intentional grounding by Wright, didn't get the call. But they did force the punt. They go first and 10 from the 27. Green on the option. And well read. Going nowhere was Sam Zanders. Caldwell did a tremendous job. Not only did he play the quarterback and play off a blocker, he was able to come out and make the tackle. Caldwell played that about as well as a defensive end can play the option, forcing the pitch and getting in on the stop. Outstanding job. 
Loss of one. Carolina among the most improved defensive units uh, anyway. Last year, 36 points per game. Last in the SEC, one of the worst figures in the country this year. They've improved that by a couple of touchdowns per game. Brad Scott gives a lot of credit to the acquisition of Wally Burnham as their defensive coordinator. Green going deep after play action. Incomplete. Intended for Mal Lawyer, who had double coverage, and it'll be third and 11. Wiggins with him step for step. Remember, Wiggins was the young man who was able to run down Priester on that 65-yard run. Take a look, he turns with him. Not much of a move there by the wideout. He knows right there that it's an up. And as a result, Wiggins obviously has shown that he can run, so no big deal for him. Holy cow. Spaceman, what's up with that? Look at that. Did you see that? Look at the, the, the two little things coming out there. Wow. I don't know how you can see in the night game with it. Amazing. That dark uh, a window to look through. Green sees a lot of room and keeps for what should be a first down. I think he's got it by a couple of feet. Given 12 yards, the tackle by Wiggins. Certainly one of, it's easy to second guess here, but South Carolina really needed a spy in that situation. Neyland Green is not known as somebody who can, you know, who, who has a great throwing arm. You see Wally Burnham right there frustrated because his secondary was an excellent coverage, but Green able to pull it down and get the first down. You need to have a spy in that situation. Middle linebacker, nose guard, whoever, who's going to watch Green. Back to the eye on first and ten. Dunnikin steps over the initial wall and driven back. Arturo Freeman up for an emphatic stop from free safety. Can't be much of a secret with regards to South Carolina what they need to do. They need to put 7-8 in the box, stop the run, and force Green to beat them with his throwing. Wally Burnham, this number really tells you how improved they are. This time a year ago through 10 games, they had allowed 62 touchdowns. 28 touchdowns, all they've given up at this point this year. Yeah, very impressive. 15 points per game less. And that's attributable to that man right there and putting them in some of the schemes that they have been in. Well, his son, uh, Shane Burnham, middle linebacker, injured uh, Clemson locker is the center, Jamie Trimble. As you pointed out, very light, down to about 236 pounds. I remember earlier in the year, you and I had a Kentucky game, and we were chatting with Bill Curry, of course, who had played pro ball with some great teams, both with the Packers and the Colts, and he mentioned to us that he had played center at 230 pounds. I said, yeah, but that was 25, 30 years ago. Now, well, that's something at 236 pounds to play center. He's effective, though. He is twice this year been named ACC Offensive Lineman of the Week, even though he's by far the lightest in the conference at that position. And he just There's got just flipped right there by Taylor. Right there. You can, see, you can see his knee going backwards just a little bit there. Trimble coming out under his own power, though. Hopefully he'll be all right. You just saw him mouth it right there. I'm all right. So the new center is Matt Butler. Watch the snap. with the give and Priester cut down at the 47 on what will now be a third and two. Raymond Priester on their first series 65 yards to set up the short scoring burst by Emory Smith. Carolina right back on the Staley dive and as we head toward the final minute of the first quarter that's where we are 7-7 in Clemson. Tommy West points out that Raymond Priester one of the most humble athletes he has ever been around. Somebody that gives credit where his credit is due to his lineman up front. Not a showman. Refreshing in this day and age. Reister getting the call. Turns that head down, keeps the legs churning, and he is a load. Is he not inside the 40? 14 more. The unfortunate tackler, Ben Washington, the strong safety. Brad Scott pointed out the thing that he does so well is he stays behind his, pa behind his pads. Take a look at the forward lean right there. Pow! As he is going forward, that enables him to be that much more difficult to tackle, and Freeman understood that as he paid the price. Priest are going right over the top of him. Almost went right over 100 yards in the first quarter. Fifth carry, 91 yards now for Priester. Maybe the last play of the quarter. And Dunnikin now spelling Smith at fullback for remember, short yardage. Remember, Dunnikin was the one that had the big breakthrough touchdown against Virginia in what Tommy West told us was his biggest game thus far, biggest victory here as a Clemson head coach defeating 
Virginia away. Tommy West has also been on the Gamecock side of this rivalry, 91 to 92. A South Carolina assistant. I think he likes his present job just a little bit better. 7-7 seven, seven after one. Sold out Clemson Memorial Stadium with 83,000 plus. Brad Scott and Tommy West squaring off in a 7-7 game as we begin the second quarter. And that's going to be a legal motion on Dunnikin, who took off a couple of beats too soon. Great first quarter by Raymond Priester, who is already better than 90 yards, including a 65-yard burst. Tommy West earlier describing his outstanding junior tailback. I, I've never been around, uh, and I think Raymond's a, a great player. I, I don't know that I've ever been around a great one that was as humble, uh, as good a practice player, had the kind of worth e ethic that Raymond's got, and just a pleasure to be around. He pointed out to us too, Dave, that when he first got here, they put him at fullback. And on a number of occasions, because of the rotation of three runners, they put him at fullback. And never once is he complained. And certainly if you're a star runner, a thousand-yard guy, you'd think that he might bitch and moan a little bit. But instead, that young man does exactly what's asked of him. In fact, when he went over a thousand yards last week, the linemen wanted to put him up on their shoulders. And what did he say? No, 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 we're not going to do that. You know, we're evil. We're equal. We're equal here. Although, if he could, you get the feeling he would have liked to have carried all of those linemen on his shoulders just to acknowledge their contribution. Yeah, when he went over a thousand yards, one of the things that he pointed out I thought was interesting is that he gave credit to his other junior offensive linemen. He said, I owe an awful lot, he said, to Bundren and Roundtree. Those are the guys that got me the holes. Big third and eight. Green avoids the blitz, swing pass, Priester weaving but not getting the first down. He's cut down at the 32-yard line by Michael Maddox. I think they're going to go for it here. You got fourth and about two and a half, and you're looking at about a 49 or 50-yard field goal. I'm thinking they're going to go for it here, especially the way they've been running the football. Which shows how much I know as the field well, team trucks out. <laughs> you had me talked into it. <laughs> Sounded awfully convincing. No, 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 that's what matters what we think, huh? <laughs> Well, that shows an awful lot of confidence in their place kicker. Matt Padgett's best this year is 48. He has not tried that many. Well, he hasn't tried. He hasn't tried at this distance. Six of eight for the year. Chris Robbins on the hole. Plenty of leg, but just wide. Now, not, not that I want to sound prescient. But if you have a guy that has not kicked this distance, yes, he has the leg, and I understand it would have done a lot for his confidence. But now, not only do you give up the opportunity to go for it on fourth down, you give South Carolina the ball at the 32. The argument here is, do you go with the guy playing the percentages? Do you go with the guy who has never kicked this distance? Or you to go with people when your fourth down conversion is somewhere between 45 and 50 percent? Well... Hooked it by maybe a foot or two, and the Gamecocks take over at the 32-yard line. After a play fake, overthrown, intended for Bridges. And he had Bridges wide open. You know, you pointed out, you pointed out his inaccuracy. He's upset with his wide receiver, but really he sat down in the zone and was wide open. That's what he's supposed to do. You're not supposed to run right into the defender, right over through him by a good four or five yards. That's certainly something that he's going to have to work on in the offseason. Coach Brad Scott pointed out that he throws well on the run, but maybe as a drop back passer, that's where he needs to work. Struggling here early. Having missed six of his last seven. Give to Staley, and a first down carry across the 45-yard line. Good for 14 yards. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll insult the collective audience's intelligence by pointing out, no, they're not booing, they are chanting, deuce. The thing that he did well there is he entered the line as he's very patient as a runner. He waited to see where his gap is, put his hand on the backs of his blockers to see what would open up. Leroy Kelly is the first one, and I remember do that very well on the NFL level. Now you saw Staley do that very patient, finds his opening. Look at the ankle that cost him about a month. Wrapped up in the brace. No ill effects whatsoever are visible tonight. Right again, consistently overthrowing his targets, and especially on the sideline routes. This one was too tall for Zola Davis, who's a pretty good-sized target at 6'1". 
Brad Scott now has to consider at some point in this particular drive to get a very simple throw, whether it's a screen pass, a little delay, to get something that Wright can complete so he can have a little bit more confidence. You would think that a short out like that might have been one, but he overthrew that too. So if I'm, if I'm Clemson, I'm the defensive people, more and more I'm beginning to say, hey, let's put eight in the box, even if they do have three wide outs. Make this quarterback beat us with a good throw. Coach to Troy Hambrick. Much more success running than passing. Hambrick reaches the Tiger 48-yard line, and there to make the tackle at that point, Anthony Simmons. Well, he's a little bit of a change-up. Hambrick, Hambrick at about 220 pounds, more of a straight-ahead runner, not unlike Priester. Again, deep at the tailback, cuts back against the grain. One of the downsides of being so quick, you see Simmons dropping him there, another outstanding tackle. But, of course, in that case, that's eight yards down the field. Third and four, passing set. Three wide outs and right in the shotgun. And no blitz to contend with. But Wright gets out where he's dangerous and is dragged down by Ford at the 28-yard line. 19-yard pickup. I pointed out earlier with regards to Green, you have to do the same thing with Wright. You have man-for-man -man coverage. Watch the corners will have their backs turned. They don't have anybody. Look in the middle of the field. There's nobody spying him. And once he breaks contain, look at all of this grass. You see the quarterback with his corners with their backs turns right there, running away from him, right able to take advantage of that with a big game. Clemson really needs to be cognizant of the fact that that young man can run. Thus, they need a spy in the middle, whether it's a nose guard or a backer. Rahum Abdullah on the tackle. And the Clemson defense now back on their heels a little bit. First down gives Staley for the middle. Pure power blocking up front. Well, it's frustrating defensively when you come up third and five and you really think that you've done your job in coverage. You know, it's been documented ad nauseum with a number of the great running quarterbacks, Randall Cunningham, Steve Young, Ed Al. But right is a different dimension. I'm thinking, Dave, as you've watched him throw up to this point, you'd have to say, hey, hey, he hasn't beaten us with the throw. You know, let's go man and have some people in the middle of the field and zone up and make sure that this guy can't beat us with anything else. Yeah, one of seven for that pass yard total of 15 yards. And he's been a big contributor to the 116 rushing yards. So your point, very well taken. Staley tries to get out the left corner. Breaks a couple of hits, spins off Simmons. The 20 is where the run will end. It's going to be third and two. Finally, in the arms of Antoine Edwards, it ends. Again, you can see just the slight gimpiness, just a little bit of a hesitation on the spin. Take a look at this as he cuts to the outside. Good block by his fullback. Now watch as he cuts back. Watch the 360 move here. Just a little bit more deliberate than you're used to seeing Deuce Staley. Nonetheless, very effective up at this point, regardless of the fact that he's not 100%. And he does have his 1,000 yards. Got it real early, the seventh Gamecock with a thousand yard season. Hambrick in, takes the give, has the first down. At the 16. You know, when we talked with Brad Scott, I asked him point blank, Hambrick with 110 yards last week against Florida, I said, were you surprised by how good this kid was? And frankly, he said, he, yes. He said he had done some things in practice, but it's one thing to do things in practice, it's another to do things in the game. Maybe Hambrick is the next guy, maybe the eighth guy to go over 1,000 yards. Harold Green, by the way, the last South Carolina 1,000-yard rusher. Nine years ago, Hambrick getting a series now. First and 10, the Tigers 16. Hambrick again, off the play fake, right. Incomplete, although that was one of his more on-target deliveries of the evening intended for Davis. It looked like he might could have made a sliding catch. Couldn't bring it in. That, that was within the realm of being catchable. Zola Davis is somebody last year who was all freshman SEC with 58 catches. And, of course, a lot of that had to do with the fact they threw a lot with Steve Tannehill last year. You know, Wright needs some confidence in the throwing game, and if that means coming up with a great catch, then you've got to do it. And I think there, too, the receivers have to be aware of that if their quarterback is struggling. Do what you can to make a great catch. Staley back in. Makes a handoff. Forward to the 13. And a fairly important third and seven coming now for Carolina. One thing that they have not shown yet in the repertoire, and I'm sure that they have it for South Carolina, is a quarterback draw. 
as effective as number one has been running the ball, that would be a logical call here. The one thing that Clemson has to do defensively is they have to contain him. Thus far, the big runs that, that Wright has had have been to the outside. And that means the defensive ends and outside linebackers are not doing their job. So to talk over all the possibilities, a Clemson timeout call with 8.46 to go, tied up at 7 in the second quarter. Well, Brad Scott gets uh, perhaps unexpected opportunity to talk things over because of the defensive timeout called by the Tigers. Gives the young quarterback a chance to go over and talk with him and get exactly what it is he wants to do here on third down and long. Under center, three wides, bootleg, run down by Abdullah. They can't really decide what to make of Raheem Abdullah. Six sacks, a lot of talent, 6'6", 230, but very erratic. He's up and he's down, and here, as he stops right, he's way up. But in this case, he's very smart. You can see right here, did you see all the grass? If Abdullah doesn't make that, if he doesn't make that tackle, not only is he going to get the first down, he might go the distance. As you pointed out, six sacks, but the problem with him is his inability to make the right decision. There, he made a very crucial one. Reed Morton to try a 36-yarder out of the hole of Chad Barnhart. Morton, a senior, much more experienced than Levitt. His kick on the way, and good. That's interesting in a game of this magnitude that they would change. Levitt is the guy that absolutely everybody wanted, but they know that in this situation they want to go with a little bit of a more seasoned young man. Crucial kick in this situation. He splits the uprights to give the Cox a three-point lead. Reed Morton's field goal gives South Carolina its first lead midway in the second quarter. Steve Florio on to kick. Reed is uh, picked up just a little bit. It's going to be behind Florio. How many kickers do they have? They've got three, and they use them. I'm telling you. <laughs> Deep men are Sam Zanders, six, and Michael Allen, number 10. This is going to come down short, and it's Zanders from the 10. Big hit. Bounced off. Could not advance past the 24. To the studio, and let's hear from Mike Adams. Well, guys, Penn State's Curtis Enos beginning, ending his season the way it began it against USC. Straw, a four-yard run against Michigan State with the score tied at 22. Puts the Lions up by seven. Enos with 147 yards so far. 14-yard return, and a flag thrown on what looked like offsides. I'm guessing that they'd want to take that one. I mean, 24-yard line's not bad, but it's not great either. And considering the way Florio kicked, you know, they could line up about the 10-yard line. Everything was offsides at the kickoff. Penalty's five yards. We'll kick it again. One of the most important things, not to, not to overstate it, is you have a returner. You want to get the ball coming forward. That time he didn't. He caught it going backwards. This is an opportunity for him to do it. Down to Pam Ward. Okay, and Anthony Simmons taking a well-deserved rest on the sidelines. You've been talking about him all night, Dave and Todd, and uh, the numbers back it up. Leading the ACC in tackles this year. He had 150 of them last year and uh, mentioned as a semifinalist for the Bronco Nagurski Award, which is for the defensive player of the year in the entire country. One of the quiet leaders, like Raymond Priester on the offense, Dave Simmons on the defense, and the scary thing is he's only a sophomore. Back to you, Dave. Thanks a lot, Pam. You know what? What's also impressive about that, Dave, is that when you look at him on the field, you and I have talked about this in all different sports, there are guys that just look like ball players. Simmons is one of those. He, you look at him in a group and you say, that must be a great player in he, that body. He couldn't be anything else. Yeah. yeah, Brad Scott compares him to Marvin Jones, a guy that he had at Florida State in his days there as an assistant. Much better kick. Michael Allen brings this one back. To the 32. And they got the extra five yards. <laughs> Went from the 20. 23-yard <laughs> return by Allen. And uh, with the grinded-out nature of the Clemson offense, they wouldn't mind a good long drive here. Maybe finish it off with, with seven. Not leave Carolina any time to do much damage uh, before halftime. Ten to seven, the first lead of the night for the Gamecocks. And Neyland Green back to work. Tiger out of the eye from the 32. Unbeaten Death Valley this year. 5-0. and oh. Green will keep maybe a gain of one, if that. 
Seven and a half to go halfway through the second quarter. 83,000 plus expected. At least that on hand at Clemson Memorial Stadium. Dave Barnett, Todd Christensen, Pam Ward, 10-7 lead for South Carolina. They need a win to have any hope of a bowl. They could finish 6-5, and five, and they've gotten some interesting overtures from the Independence Bowl. They figure this uh, game cut crowd's going to travel pretty well. They have averaged almost 80,000 per home outing this year, Columbia. While Clemson hopes to finish this one with a six-game win streak and head perhaps to the Peach in Atlanta. Flag is down as Priester takes the pitch to the 38. South Carolina lined up in the neutral zone, so that gives Clemson a free play, and that's unfortunate because they played the option so well. Bill Goss, the referee, with the offsides indication. Take a look right here, number 90 is lined up in the neutral zone. You can see his hand is completely off right there. That's Henry Taylor, defensive tackle. Barnwell, South Carolina. Just lined up right smack in the neutral zone. Did I say right smack in the right neutral zone? Did I say it. that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Too many Southeast Conference games. <laughs> it's rubbing off on you. It is. Well, at least I didn't say smack down. You, you might just be an old boy by the end of the year. Good old boy. You got, you got the material. Uh, or maybe not. You don't watch it. And once again, very close to being offside is Taylor. No flag this time. As Emory Smith is going to be close to the first down marker at the 42. It just, just goes to show how numbers can be deceptive. You pointed out that Priester, almost 100 yards in the first quarter alone. They've been running the ball effectively. Good time of possession, yet they're down 10-7. to 7. So this goes to show the numbers aren't everything. Emory Smith has the Tiger touchdown. He is sixth of the year. Last year had 15 touchdowns, but he's been bothered this year by low back pain, shoulder pain. They hope he's about 90%. For this one. Said his dream is to play in front of his brother. That's not very surprising, is it? Priester to the 46. Well, both these teams with bowl aspirations, and Clemson, it would appear, with a definite bowl future. Florida, of course, still unbeaten. They have next week's showdown with Florida State still to go, but they hope to be in uh, the Sugar, wrap up a national title. Alabama, Tennessee, LSU, 5 and 2 in conference play. Auburn, Taking on Alabama tonight, needing a win, as does Carolina. Second down and six, and it's Priester turning back inside for the first down to the 46 of South Carolina. Where Ben Washington makes the tackle, and again we hear from Mike Adams. Well, Dave and Todd, of the myriad of games we watched this Saturday, this one the most exciting. Back comes... Michigan State against Penn State. Todd Schultz, 32 yards to Nigeria Carter. The Spartans score two plays later. The game is knotted at 29 with 5.58 left. Wow, anybody that saw Auburn, Georgia last week has, yeah. uh, has got to wonder, anytime there is an overtime, if they're going to see a, a show like those two put on. Deep ball, open but overthrown. Attended for Kenya Crooks, who had made his cut and was in the clear. Beating both Wiggins and Freeman, but Green threw a frozen rope. Not enough air under. Play action fake sucks up the safety, and he turns, and it's a little bit too late. Crooks has him by a step, but once again, both quarterbacks are really struggling with the overthrows. You can see Green's reaction right there. I had it. Oh, nuts. Oh, I don't know who said nuts. Green That's my reaction. <laughs> 53% passer, but when he, when he does go to the air, he usually uh, means business. 80% of his completions are to wide receivers. Timeout number two called here by Clemson. 4.55 to go in the first half. And the Tigers hoping to at least tie it on this drive. Only one more timeout left for Clemson. They come to the line second and 10 from the Gamecocks 46. Staley and Priester living up to the advanced billing. Raymond in particular has a 65-yarder to his credit. Play fake. Here comes the reverse. Brian Wofford. Wow. Tripped Great up. Play. Good looking play. 
That took a little bit too long to develop, and Benji Young shows some superior speed. Outside linebacker. Now take a look at all the white shirts. They're going to be fooled, but this takes just a little bit too long to develop. Now watch, here he is, number 49. Just sees it at the last minute. You can't clip him, so he lunges and makes the tackle. Boy, that's a terrific play by Young to go against the grain while everybody else is fooled to keep his head in pursuit from the backside. Big time play. Sub 4 6 speed for you. I believe it. I believe it. Time speed. No game. And it's third and 10. Gamecocks creep up. Show blitz. Here they come. But Green sees open spaces and has a first down keeper to the 35. Telling you the best play in the arsenal for both these offenses tonight is let the quarterback take off. One of these people in the middle, I've mentioned it before, you got a spy. Everybody has their back turned. I mean, Neil and Green is an outstanding runner, but he's not going to make anybody forget Danny Werfel. And as a result, South Carolina has to be aware of that. Wally Brennan needs to put somebody in the middle of the field to spy when the young man goes back on third or second and very long. Three carries and good for 25 yards in this first half for Green. So the drive reaches the 35 at the Gamecocks. Crimson clinched goal eligibility with a 40 to 17 win over North Carolina State. They are 12 and 8 in bowls. One of the better percentages in college football. That carry good for five by Priester and a late flag on a late hit. As the Tigers celebrated. Once again, the big argument is, is trying, or the big discussion rather, is trying to keep your poison a game in this magnitude. When a first guy might get away with something or hold a little bit longer or hit you a little bit longer, you've got to hold on to your poise. You can't give up that 15 yards. Sylvester Miller getting a talking to from Brad Scott after the late hit. We'll bring on that very point. And he's telling him, sure, keep your aggressiveness, but it makes so sense to just hand them 15 yards, especially in a game like this where the yards are so precious. Miller, though, one of the success stories for Carolina, former walk-on, is now a starter at defensive end, has earned a scholarship, junior out of Columbia. But a costly late hit here in his first and 10 Tigers. They move now to the 17 of the game. Cox run the option on the cutback. Priester, and he's going to lose one, and another flag flies. Tackle by Darren Hambrick before the penalty marker came down. Now, this is interesting with regards to Darren Hambrick. I think there's gonna they're going to have some holding on the outside by the wide receiver. Darren Hambrick, now is he the brother of Troy or is Troy the brother of Darren? <laughs> That's the big argument. Darren Hambrick, the transfer from Florida, was the one that was getting all the notoriety. Hambrick was the mere freshman. Now after 110 yards, holding. Troy is getting a lot of the attention, whereas Darren, an outstanding outside linebacker. You see what they do here on the option. Force the pitch way too soon and the pursuit is right there. Now to the, just to the left of your screen, the wide receiver in on the hold. And because it's a spot foul, they move back another 10 yards. Well, to answer your question, Darren is a junior. Troy is a freshman. I'm thinking through Troy's entire life, he has been Darren's brother. Right. In the nature of all little brothers. Yeah, but there's something about getting 100 yards in the game where suddenly you get a little bit of attention. <laughs> Three wides. Four wides now. And Priester will take the shovel pass, turn up field, and reach the 16. Good right call. Off the original line of scrimmage, getting 11 yards, and Miller back in after the late hit penalty to make the tackle. Good call. Put him in a situation where South Carolina wants to get a big rush on the quarterback, doesn't want to let him run. As a result, they're able to sneak Priester underneath for the Utah pass. It puts him up in a pretty good situation, getting that holding yardage back. Formation, three wide out. First man through, Dunnikin. Inside the five, dives, touchdown.
When you're not the main man, you got to make the most of your opportunities, and Dunnikin does. Good block there by Zane Lewis, the left guard, that springs him free, and he's able to break a couple of tackles and get into the end zone. Left side of the offensive line, outstanding in that case. Lewis and Bundren creating the gap for Dunnikin. Padgett gets the extra point, but he bangs it off the upright and gets a happy bounce. 14-10 Clemson. You certainly have to be aware of Priester, and as he goes in this direction, the 100-yard man, and the guard pulls out here, the flow of traffic is going to go here, and then the left guard, Zane Lewis, is going to make the block here, enabling the fullback to go the distance. If you saw earlier, if you saw earlier in the game, the first the first touchdown was gained by Emory Smith on a similar play, a little bit of a sucker play, but the left guard is the man making the block for Dunnikin to go into the end zone. Tapping the 10-play drive. Terry Cousin, who had a shot at Dunnigan, but bounced off at about the five. That is a nice return of 27 yards. And South Carolina with better than two minutes before halftime to try and regain the lead. And because of the fact that they do stop the clock on first downs, this is not a situation with 219 remaining in the half where South Carolina just has to go back into a shotgun and throw every down. Plenty of time remaining. You just saw in the graphic right there all of their timeouts. They can go with some draws. There's a lot of different things they can do here. And they're not a throw on every down play in a team anymore without Tammy here. 307 yards passing per game last year, about 120 less than that this year with Wright, the greater running threat. This time, only a pickup of a couple as he's chased out by Anthony Simmons. Well, you can wrap up your football weekend with Monday Night Football. The Pittsburgh Steelers, led by the punishing running of Jerome Bettis, head to Miami, and the Dolphins and Dan Marino need a win to stay in the hunt for an AFC wildcard berth. ABC Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern. You mentioned Jerome Bettis. Got to give him a lot of credit, over 1,000 yards. Anytime a man's reputation gets scarred as it was, to see him come back and do as well as he is, you got to be happy for him. How many more remaining questions about him? Right, looked as if he expected to hand that ball off, and he's buried. First man there, Brett Williams. It looked to me like he was looking for a draw play, and you can see him screaming at Hambrick. Take a look, watch what Wright does. Now he's waiting for somebody to be there for the and that and Hambrick isn't there, and so he's stuck. Now he's able to cut up field, but the, the timing of it was a little bit too much. And a face mask is going to salvage the play for South Carolina. A couple of big breaks for them in this half. The would-be intentional grounding that was not called, and here the sack, which turns into positive yardage, five-yard face mask penalty. They'll mark it up to the 42. And don't forget the block into the kicker, which was also a little bit questionable. Good point. And yet they trail Tommy West Tigers. They have all three of their timeouts. And this is second and two. Hambrick, as he's hit from behind, is going to have the first down, as we hear from Mike Adam. Well, an unbelievable finish in the making in Pasadena. The Bruins trailing all game long by as many as two touchdowns with 39 seconds left. Skip Hicks goes into the end zone to tie the game at 38. It looks like we're heading into overtime. This is one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of the overtime. I, I want to see some two-point conversions. I want to see some drama right there at the end, and now it's non-existent because of the overtime. You like to make the coach make the decision. Absolutely. That has been taken out. Deep for Robinson, who got tangled up, and the ball thrown over his outside shoulder, where he had made his cut, expecting it over the inside shoulder. Fr frustrated by Wright, though, even though he gets tangled up, he's got to keep running. Robinson, six foot four, 209, and we were told by Brad Scott, a 4-4-4-5 guy, so you're thinking that there's a guy that you would think would be more of a threat by coming into this game, Robinson, with, I think, it's only 19 catches. 19 catches, but 24 yards per catch. And Wright continues to struggle mightily through the air. One for 10 for 15 yards. Rolling, looking to keep all the way. Run down by Price. Does he, does he show some speed from defensive end? Mercy. Big 6'6", 280-pounder running down 
Anthony Wright, one of the faster quarterbacks in the country. Also over there, Raymond White, the nose guard. Wright tried to get out of bounds, but he did not. And as you pointed out, they have all three of their timeouts, so a good opportunity to call timeout. Not only does Wright have to regroup after that run, but he gives him a chance to go over and chat with his head coach, Brad Scott. Brad Scott has the plan on third and two, and they want first to get the first down. That's taken care of on Hambrick's off-tackle slant. He reaches the 38-yard line. Now, they have two timeouts. They will stop the clock to get the chains moved up at 52 seconds. But you know that Brad Scott had two plays called with that in mind. Now at the 33-yard line, you would have to say, I I'm guessing just based on that 36-yard field goal earlier, 30-plus, they need another 10 yards to get in field goal range. Incomplete again. Once again, Wright had what he wanted. He had the short corner, and Zola Davis was open. He just could not deliver. Plenty of time. Ben Fleming, the uh, intended target. The injured Tiger is the strong safety, Antoine Edwards. Number one, Antoine Edwards injured on the Who play. fell right where Fleming made his cut at about the 20. Take a look right at the end. You're right. I, I had said Zola Davis. That was my mistake. It is Fleming. He lays out, but he was just, he was wide open. There's a situation where as a quarterback, you have to be aware you don't have to make the perfect throw. When the guy is that open, go ahead and throw the marshmallow and give him a chance to come back and make the catch and get down. Don't lead him perfectly because he had a big gainer there if he could have delivered. Edwards is a sophomore from Starkville, Mississippi, their fourth leading tackler. Able to get him away from Jackie Sherrill, eh? Yeah, somehow. Left town, left the state. And appears to be okay. Not limping as he heads toward the sideline. 39 seconds. Second and 10 for Carolina. That field goal was a 36-yarder by Morton, so they're still a ways away from what would be comfortable range his career best is 48 Levitt in high school this is why every team in the country wanted him had a 62 and a 60 yard but don't forget that's teed up that tee is gone and believe me that makes a big difference to a kicker I talked with my friend Dave Robinson an outstanding place kicker and he told me that big difference between high school and college out of the shotgun open there's the second completion at last and the catch by Calvin Owens takes him out of bounds a gain of 11 stops the clock at 34 seconds and a big one it was now they are in field goal range and on top of that able to get out of bounds and stop the clock they're not in a desperation hurry up at all with two timeouts and 34 seconds that's why I don't understand why they didn't huddle here the clock is stopped Get in the huddle and be sure. Play fake. Pressure on right. Gets away. Fires. Incomplete. Owens thought he had it near the goal line. Well, I tell you, I was impressed with Wright. He steps up. He steps up. Take a look at the pressure. First from the backside, then from the front side. Almost gets caught there. Now he steps up. Guy at his legs. He's able to deliver the ball. Take a look as the ball hit the ground. Oh, man. That was close. That was cl Yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, you're the broadcaster, and you're telling me, okay, it wasn't that close the ball hit the ground. As a receiver, he used to beg a lot. <laughs> Just tell you, I thought he meant I had to catch. Traps as good as a catch to you guys. Right? Heck yes. Utah pass. Shovel. Inside the 15 before he is dragged down is Steve Nixon. Dragged down by Edwards, who apparently is okay, but Nixon on his first carry of the night, 17 yards. Take a look. The fullback doesn't get that many opportunities. Everybody's all over Staley, right? Well, Nixon gets there, and take a look at the block that enables him to get open. That was number seven. That was number 78. Great tackle that he had there, his tackle in that case which was Travis Whitfield, enabled him to get into the open field. When you're a fullback, they don't pay that much attention to you. Nose of the ball is right at the 10. I don't think they're calling it first and goal, though, but in essence, that's what it is. 18 seconds. Play action. And right scrambles. 
directs traffic and incomplete toward the back of the end zone. Owens, the nearest target, with 11 seconds. Now there's the thing that you pointed out earlier in the other drive that he did not do, which was throw the ball away. He really didn't have a shot at anybody. Excellent coverage by Clemson in that case. Once again, he broke outside of the contain, but Clemson was able to cover the people they needed to. Right last time, of course, gets sacked. This time, he's able to get the incompletion. The only downside of it is that it costs him an awful lot of time. And now with 11 seconds left, you have to wonder if they've only got one play remaining before they kick the field goal. Probably so. And Unless it's just a real quick pass. And with the timeout, with the timeout or two remaining, now he used the timeout here. I'm telling you, he needs to go to the sideline and debate about whether or not they could fool them with a draw play or a running play because you know that Clemson in this situation is probably going to rush three, put eight back, or rush four and put seven back, run, and if it doesn't work, call the timeout and kick the field goal because you know right there, play action or anything else is not going to fool them. They're going to be back backpedaling into the end zone, give them anything up front, maybe give Staley an opportunity to break a tackle and go in. Well, he's over there with a very creative play caller, Brad Scott, as we previously mentioned, the offensive coordinator for the Florida State National Championship season of 1993. John Reeves is uh, his quarterback coach, former great Florida quarterback in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. John Eason is the Gamecocks offensive coordinator. Well, I, I know this dates me, but I remember John Reeves to Carlos Alvarez. Boy, I yep. tell you, that was a stud bowl combination. They were good. And Ray Graves. And Reeves had a pretty decent pro career, even though it might not be what people expected. Did some things with the Eagles, then came back at a later stage of life, shall we say, to go with the Tampa Bay Bandits. But after watching Mike McCallum last night at age 39, hey, there is no hole. <laughs> So one timeout left, second down, 11 seconds. Quarterback draw will be big here, and the right guard moves. Boy, oh boy, what a mistake. And if it's against Carolina, that will give a coach ulcers every time. You've just had a minute to talk stuff over, and this happens. Here's John Eason, the offensive coordinator. Take a look right here. You're going to see the rock. Ed Rubiak, 63. How unfortunate. Be because now, now you've got a situation where instead of looking to the touchdown, now with 11 seconds left, you need to set up a field goal. I still like the quarterback draw in this situation. Well, at first, nobody in the backfield. Now Hambrick shifts back there. And Robinson goes across in motion. Nope, steps up, fires. Incomplete, broken up by Andy Ford. Intended for Jason Pomar. And the field goal unit comes on with six seconds. Here's what I'm talking about in the end zone. You can see right there, man coverage. Now look at the middle right here. Oh, shoot, tuck it in and tuck it in and go. A great play by Ford. It was. Ford made a nice play to bat that ball away. But that's, you know what, that's what I get for playing coordinator. I should just back off. <laughs> I, I just really like that situation because when they went the three wide receivers to the left, that took the free safety out of the middle of the field. And the only guy he would have had to beat on the run would have been the inside backer. And even if he does get tackled, he's tackled in the middle of the field, calls timeout, and they can kick about a 30-yard field goal. Now they've got the harsh angle. We're looking at about a 32, 33-yarder. Difficult here because of, because of the hash marks in college football. Clemson's called its final timeout. Reed Morton, a little time to think about it. As soon as we complete our business here, Rivalry Weekend will continue from the Metrodome with number 24, Iowa. And Jim Wacker heading out as the head coach of Minnesota. Final game in the Dome for Coach Wacker in the Floyd of Rosedale battle. Tradition that uh, I think the Big Ten has got to lead everybody in traditions and trophies. It seems like every game of the conference you're playing for something, some kind of hardware. No doubt. And one thing that you pointed out with regards to Jim Wacker, even though he wasn't successful at Minnesota, I guarantee he could have success as a motivational speaker. That's one of the happiest dudes I've ever been around. Really upbeat. Says he uh, would like to be a college professor. He's going to move back to the Austin, Texas area. He's got a lot of family. Reed Morton will try a 32 yarder. And 
Maryland to make it a one-point game at the half. He's got it. Here's what I like. Now, now, I know this is a small point. Did you see what he just did? He pointed to all of his offensive linemen. He pointed to his snapper and pointed to his holder and thanked everybody. You know what? I know this is a funny thing. Just once, I'd like to see one of those receivers or guys score in the end zone, score and instead of spiking the ball or dancing, turning around and going like this, holding up ten fingers and going, thanks, thanks, because everybody contributed. Well, you're asking for an awful lot there. You're asking for a massive personality trend. Well, I know, but right there, he gets the nice snap, the good hold. He punches it through from the difficult angle. And then his reaction. Take a look at his reaction. Okay, thanks, Barnhart. Excellent hold. Now watch as he points. Thanks to my snapper. Thanks to my snap Reese's. Thanks to my guards. Thanks to my tackles. I like it. I just, I, I appreciate that. See the pointing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And All hopefully, right. if he misses a big one, then they'll reciprocate and give him a break. Well, or Morton would go, my bad. Pats his chest and says, my bad. Like he's going to point at the 300-pounders and say, that's yeah, on you. that's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good-looking ball game, huh? Steve Florio to kick. Dribbler. And this is going to run out the remaining time for the first half. John Thompson had the return. Yeah, this one has more than lived up to its billing. Clemson a six-point favorite. The lead at the half by one at 13. They will receive the second half kickoff. Steve Florio ready to send it on its way. Sam Zanders and Michael Allen are back. Zanders juggles. It begins his return from the 10. And forward to the 32. Where it will be Green and the Tiger offense back to work. Green's numbers in the first half, two of six through the air for just 16 yards. Three keepers for 25 yards, and the big number belongs to Priester, who early on on his first carry of the game, in fact, broke a 65-yarder. Nine carries, 113 for the first half for Priester. And right back to work on the ground. Raymond Priester to the 37. Let's uh, check in down on the sideline with Pam. All right, Dave. Close game. Some people might be surprised, but Clemson coach Tommy West says it's exactly what he expected. No turnovers in the first half. And Coach West says if whoever turns the ball over in this half probably will pay for it and lose the game. And he also says the big thing, keep running the ball with Priester, but they want to contain South Carolina's quarterback better. Dave? It's a big problems with Wright in the first half. West, though, loves the month of November, as you just saw. He's only lost once as the head man here. Priester takes the toss near the first down marker at the 42, where Ree Wiggins and Benji Young combine to make the tackle. Play this game with me for just a second. Eddie George is the only other one that comes to mind. You know how numbers set people apart? Who, what's another famous 27 you can think of? Eddie George is yeah, the only, first guy. Yeah. That's the only guy I can think of. I like that only because some guys, when they choose the number, do it because they want to establish themselves. They don't want to be like everybody else. They want to set themselves apart. Certainly, Priester has done that at his university. The only double 1,000-yard runner in Clemson history, Raymond Priester. Emory Smith, who had their first touchdown carry, across the 45. Henry Taylor makes the tackle. Emory Smith acted the number game when he uh, signed on to play at Clemson. Naturally inquired about uh, that number 22. It's kind of a, a fond number in the Smith family. It yep. was not available. It had already been taken, so uh, he picked number 18. He gets his wish, though. He would love to line up where Daryl Johnston currently does as the blocking back for his brother. Green, he avoids one hit. Now turns up, fires a flutter ball, incomplete. In fact, they're going to get pass interference. A near disaster turns into a penalty against the Gamecock defenders who are stunned at the turn of events. Terry Cousin. I think was the guilty party back here, along with Arturo Freeman. 
One of the frustrations here is that when you have the scrambling quarterback, you, you want to know where you are in the field. The pass rush forces Green to the right. Now when he throws back against, the free safety should be able to see where the people are. Now play the ball. Play the ball. Don't play the man. Play the ball, and you're right. Cousin is the one who's guilty of the infraction. Cousin needs to come up, jump over the top, and make a play. Instead, he plays the man and holds on to his arm. And as you pointed out, costly 15 yards, a real gift for the Tigers. Joe Woods actually playing DB along with him. He's trying to swat that ball away from the possible interception. Cousin, though, helps him out. Move it up inside. The game caught 40. And the drive continues. Priester through the first wall. And close to another 10. Ben Washington dragging him down at strong safety. Priester at six foot one, you might not think would be that effective because at six foot one, that's actually fairly tall for a running back. But look at the forward lean. A great deal of his body is through the middle in those thighs and buttocks. And with that great center of gravity, he's able to run through the arm tackles of the Cox up to this point. He got nine. And easily picking up the first is Kelton Dunnikin, who had the second touchdown for Clemson in the first half. Don't forget, as soon as we complete business, Iowa, Minnesota from the Metrodome, 8.30 Eastern. Aiden Fry squaring off against Jim Wacker in uh, what Iowa hopes will be a jumping off point for their postseason. Number 24 ranked Hawkeyes coming in. Good opportunity here for despite the three wide receiver set, this is where the strong safety can be key. Washington for South Carolina now needs to take some chances and go with some blitzes. Put eight in the box because you cannot account for the strong safety. And up to this point now, Clemson well over 200 yards rushing. South Carolina is going to have to take some chances to stop the running game of Clemson. Maddox bringing down Priester with actually an assist from Dunnikin, blocking back who uh, Priester tripped over at the 23. Give him a gain of three, and it's second and seven. Priester usually is a better second half back. He's got a long way to go to match his first half. He averages four per carry first half, six yards per carry in the second half. First man through, and Dunnikin with a flag down reaches the 19. Marker thrown low in the backfield of Clemson. That play has been very effective for Clemson. Two touchdowns on the play. It's going to come back, of course, because of the holding. You saw the umpire's flag come in. Now this is going to put a little pressure on Green to see if he can deliver in the throwing game. But, you know, if I'm Clemson in this situation, because I've run it so effectively, second down and very long, I'm looking at a draw or something we haven't seen up to this point has been a screen pass. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Well, we haven't. And we did mention, though, that Green, when he goes to the air, likes the wideouts. About four out of every five completions goes to a wideout. Carolina, just the opposite rights leading receiver, along with Robinson, is Staley, even with all the time he missed. Second and 17 from the 34. Low snap, and Green picks it up. Again evades the rush and floats an interception. Freeman weaves his return to the 27. Bad pass, bad decision all the way. Green was able to get away with one earlier when he threw that absolute quail up in the air and it turned into an interference. In this case, you're going to see it. He does a great job getting the ball and a good job of the offensive line keeping people away from him. Good fake right here. But here's where you should not, here's where you should throw at the feet of people. Throws across his body an absolute pop-up. Freeman makes the pick and does a nice job with the run back as he cuts across the field, breaks a couple of tackles. He wants to make the most of it once he's got his hands on the ball, but you pointed it out. Good call. Bad decision on the part of the quarterback, Green. Arturo Freeman's third interception and a penalty marker down and a huddle of the officials, and we might have something after Freeman's interception. Illegal block on the offense. Penalty is declined. After the play... There's a non-contact, unsportsmanlike foul on the Orange team. It's a 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, that falls into the heading of a big-time shift of momentum, yep. doesn't it? <laughs> well, coaches had wondered who would make the first turnover. That has been answered. 
And it's worse than just the change of possession. They also improved their field position by some 15 yards, and they start from their 43. Anthony Wright with the give to Staley, who finds no room whatsoever. Tried to cut back toward the middle. First man there, Trevor Price, quickly joined by Anthony Simmons. Well, you and I have talked about this. I'm one of those people that when you get a turnover, I really like the opportunity to go for it right away. Even though your quarterback is 3 for 16, great opportunity when you have a chance to play and to go with a big play. And somebody who is back in the game now, despite the separated elbow, is Dingle, number 52. We thought he was going to be out for the game, but he's back in. That is amazing. But he helped out on that stop. Turns this play inside. Again, Staley with no room. May lose one. There you see Dingley was actually in on the play. This says a lot for Clemson's defense because the momentum had shifted after the interception plus the penalty out to the 43-yard line. You think, uh-oh, what's going to happen now? Two straight times they go to Staley, and two straight times the Clemson front seven has stuffed him. You see Dingle forces him back against the grain. Washington Price and Al put him on the ground. I can't believe Dingle has returned to this game. He's out now in the passing situation. Blitz threatened on third and 11. Antoine Edwards runs it back inside the five-yard line for Clemson. Goes with the deep end. He's going to come from the right of your screen, but he's not going to be able to deliver. Once again, costly overthrow right into the hands of Antoine Edwards, who doesn't have anybody up the field. It looks like he might go the distance. Instead, he is tackled inside the five, and just as you made the address at the beginning of the first half, no turnovers now, two turnovers back-to-back, -back, but this one costly. Clemson now set up shop inside the five. Brought it back 56 yards. Emory Smith flagged down Smith. Burrows his way near the two. Referee is the one that dropped the flag. It's going to be against the Tigers. One more look now at the, the tremendous work by Edwards on the interception. This is a deep end. He has pretty good protection. Just overthrows it. Right there, completely overthrows his man. I believe it was intended for Zola Davis, and that was an absolute gift for Edwards. That's a terrific run back. But now, once again, it's funny, not just the physical, but the mental errors. First and goal now at the eight-yard line for Clemson. Second interception of the year for Edwards. It was a motion penalty against Clemson. Back now to first and goal from just inside the eight. Smith, and they're ready for that play. As you pointed out, they had a lot of success scoring both their touchdowns. On the quick inside give in the uh, first half, Smith maybe to the six here. Burnham and Hambrick combined for the tackle. You know what the line is. First time you fooled me, shame on me. Shame on you. Second time, shame on me. Well, they had two touchdowns out of that play. Third time, they said no. To the six, a gain of two. Second and goal. This time, it's Priester. Oh, man. Just to the five as the Gamecock defense stiffens. Benji Young along with Burnham this time. Remember, Benji Young is the one that ran down the intercept, ran down rather the reverse. Good looking hit here because remember, Priester, 230 pounds. Look at him. He's got a five yard hit start, but bam. He's the one, not only Benji Young, but the man underneath who, who is assisted on that play, number 52, Shane Burnham, as we pointed out, the son of uh, defensive quarter Wally Burn showing that he has a little physicality about it. Vague pattern is going to be over the intended receiver, Kenya Crooks, who was covered anyway. And that is an absolutely huge, huge defensive stand for South Carolina. Clemson, having rushed the ball for over 200 yards, gets a first down inside the five, and now is have to have to settle for a field goal. I tell you what, Burnham and the defense of South Carolina has got to feel very good right now. Timing is way off on this, and there's double coverage. He has no chance. 
if he actually makes the throw where it's supposed to be, Freeman probably gets the pick. 22 yard effort, Padgett. And good. But you're exactly right. To settle for three when they had first and goal from the three, not bad at all for Carolina. Good work by Kelton Dunnigan back in the first half. Tigers, though, after a first and goal from the three, settled for the field goal. And following the Blue Williams touchback, it will be South Carolina ball from their 20, but they only trail by four. Could be so much worse. Ah, they've had all kinds of trouble on first down tonight. 11 of their 18 plays on first down have gone for zero or minus yardage, and Wright has had nothing going through the air. Three for 17. Most of those 14 incompletions have not even been close. And the last one, he served right up to the strong safety for the Edwards interception. Three wide outs, under this screen. Deuce Staley saw a hole, and boy, did it close in a hurry. Simmons got over there to plug the gap and limit Staley to about a yard and a half. I'm really impressed with Simmons, and it's certainly understandable why this young man is getting all the accolades. Watch how quickly he gets off the block, right into the hole, and look at the hand strength. I mean, we saw earlier in the game Deuce Staley run through some of those arm tackles, but Simmons is 6'1", 220 pounds. Reminds me an awful lot of a linebacker of Pittsburgh by the name of Greg Lloyd. Similar physical stature, great tackle. More so than Marvin Jones. I think so, yeah. Second and eight. Right. They are ready for him. Bumps heads with Andre Carter. The backup for Edwards at strong safety. ESPN2 with the best in college football next week at 12.30 Eastern. The Egg Bowl, the Civil War battle in Mississippi and Mississippi State. And then at 3.30, Marcus Crandall and East Carolina will tackle North Carolina State. All that next weekend on the Deuce. A lot of pressure now, not just on Wright, but on Brad Scott. He's been trying to do some different things, get some different sets. Try and confuse Clemson here, but he hasn't been able to do it. And now the onus falls on Wright, who has been pointed out three for 17 thus far. Shovel pass. This is Jacob Bush, the backup fullback. Breaks one tackle, but not the second, and he will fall short of the first down marker. Is this a rhetorical thing to ask? It is. I was just about to debate the idea of whether or not they might go for it. Gets the ball underneath. Strong young man breaks that tackle and breaks the tackle of Simmons, but great support in the secondary. As you pointed out, number 28, Carter, comes up to drop him one yard short, and they're not taking any chances with the clock running less than six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Only down by four, they're going to kick it away. McLeon is deep. Love it. Good of a short wobbler and wiped out right at the 37. 33 yard kick. And Burnham delivered the shot. 5.41 to go, third quarter. We'll be there Thanksgiving afternoon here for San Diego State for the time being, though. Clemson working on a four point lead. They're trying to finish off their first perfect home season in six years. 5-0 in Death Valley and up 17-13 with a first down at their 37. Toss to Priester. Not much blocking developing. They had a gain of just two. Let's hear down on the sidelines from Pam. All right, Dave, and here at Frank Howard Field, something relatively new, a couple of years old, it's the Ring of Honor, which is on the far sideline for former standout Clemson football history being honored. Steve Fuller, who played quarterback here, Frank Howard, for whom the field is named and was here for a half a century as coach and athletic director. Banks McFadden, a player in the 30s, both basketball and football, his number's retired. And Jeff Davis, a linebacker who was on the national championship team in 1981. To be eligible, you have to be in the Clemson Hall of Fame, and, very important, you have to have your degree. Dave? Pass is caught by the tight end, Lamont Hall. Just his seventh 
catch of the year. Goes for 12 yards. Last year, the Tiger tight ends combined for zero receptions. They are not a big part of the Clemson offense. Well, now, yes, we remember Tommy West came over to him and he pats him on the shoulder and says, hey, you look like you could still play. And I said, not in your offense. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> as much as you throw to the tight end. That's why you, you saw Hall's reaction. He's ran back to the huddle. He was holding the thing up like it was a trophy. You thought he scored an 80-yard touchdown. Just thrilled to get his hands on the ball. Last time the tight end caught a touchdown pass here, Danny Ford was still the coach for crying out loud. That carry by Dunnikin. Short yardage to the studio, Mike Animal. Well, Dave and Todd, Arizona State not about to stub his toe like Ohio State did earlier today. Jake Plummer, 21 yards, 27 yards to Keith Poole. Sun Devils lead by 14 for Plummer. Career touchdown pass number 63. How do you think the Rose Bowl folks feel oh, right about can't, now? Can't be very happy with Ohio State. But then again, Arizona State's got to like their chances. They've got to figure that, hey, well, we'll get into the scenario a little bit later. Green goes through traffic and is not able to squeeze through the sack. Went for a second as if he might be wrapped up by Michael Maddox and Maynard Caldwell. Here's coming back to Michael Maddox. Good pass rush from the side. Actually, actually getting knocked down right there. You can see Caldwell comes from the outside. He was actually on the ground. What's amazing is Green is still on his feet before he is finally dropped. Getting back to the scenario that you pointed out earlier, I think what Arizona State is rooting for now is that the winner of Florida, Florida State gets beat by Nebraska. And then if they beat Ohio State, they're the national champs. They have to. That's I think the only formula that will work for them. Green on a roll on a third and 13, hangs it up deep and incomplete. Intended for Mal Lawyer. Once again, a good looking defensive stand by South Carolina, forcing the punt near midfield. Wally Burnham engineering the massive turnaround defensively for South Carolina. They credit it to, uh, if you boil it down to one word, attitude. They go out expecting to force the issue this year, which was not always the case. Kevin Laird will kick to Corey Bridges, standing just about at his 20-yard line. Three and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Oh. Big kick. But a touchback. 52 yards, but a net of 32. 322 to go in the third, 17-13 game. First and 10 for South Carolina from the 20-yard line. They trail 17-13. And Wright has a strike. First catch by Marcus Robinson, the big play specialist. McCleon there to drive him out. Do you think that Brad Scott went over there and said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Go out at six yards, take three steps, throw it. Let's get some confidence for Wright. I mean, let's just get a completion. Simplify. Four yards, five, I don't care. Let's just see if we can get a completion, get this young man some confidence. 14 total yards since halftime. Cutback run, Staley, and he's tripped up by Raheem Abdullah. There's somebody, I got to tell you right now, there is somebody, Staley, I mean, who's going to be in the tub. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be in the tub. You know, it's one thing to have your ankle and everything else, but you're not used to getting hit. He didn't have any pad work this week, hasn't had basically been hit for a month. Now all of a sudden he's got to go into this huge game against the physical defense, I guarantee. Final year in the Carolina program. I was about to mention, too, in that game there's a 99-yard game, so really, you know, for all intents and purposes, averaging well over 100 per game. First and goal, 22 seconds, third quarter. Now here's a situation where if he wants, he can let the quarter run out and go over and, and talk it over with his coach. Because the clock is going to start now. And it's well behind the 25-second clock, so he has an opportunity. But evidently, he doesn't feel like he needs to go over and chat with the coach. Pretty easy, give it to Deuce. Deuce reaches, does not quite grab the goal line, but he is inside the one, and that will do it for the third quarter. What an amazing push by that offensive line. Boy, oh boy. 15 more minutes in the battle for South Carolina bragging rights. 17-13 Clemson. 
Tigers five game winning streak in some jeopardy they do lead by four as we begin the fourth quarter not many Gamecock fans at Memorial Stadium but those who are here have a great look at second and goal inside the one leaping Stanley touchdown and those people on that end are thrilled that they didn't score at the end of the third quarter because now they can cheer like crazy for their boy Staley. Clemson knew what was coming. Here comes the jump and take a look at how close it is. Did it take a good job. Does it? Whoa, he takes off from the three. Now he gets just gets the ball over. I'll tell you what. Good charge by the offense. Both really both lines in that case. But the vertical leap of Staley was able to get him over the top. An extra point by Courtney Levitt. He's good. Deuce on the deuce. Looks like an Emmy winner. Having a terrific game. And he's got to feel very good about himself because. You come into it after missing three weeks with an injury against a, a highly ranked team like Clemson that's been playing some outstanding defense. And to be as effective as he has been tonight, that young man's got to be thrilled. And animated. Just to <laughs> continue our discussion from a moment ago, I think he's feeling no pain whatsoever. He has taken a beating, to be sure. Well, no surprise, the key play of the drive is his big run. Second and ten after throwing three straight times. Staley bursts up the middle. Great job of the right side of the offensive line. Even though he's a little gimpy, might not have the same speed. Makes the cutback and sets up South Carolina in good situation with the first and goal. That was a key play of the drive for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Eighty yard drive, eleven plays. Drew Staley the whole show in a back and forth game second lead tonight by the Gamecocks Florio's kick returned from the four by Allen Michael Allen Nicely down to the 32, 28 yards on the return. Let's hear from the studio and Mike. Guys, with all the talk about Jake Plummer and Keith Poole, Arizona State's hottest player in the last month, running back Terry Battle. He scores from a yard out here. That is 13 in the last five games, his third of the evening. Arizona State by three touchdowns. Now I'll be, inter I'll be interested when we come back and talk a little bit more about Arizona State, Mike Adamley's opinion as well as yours, Dave. I'm thinking that Arizona State has a legitimate concern about whether or not they could be number one. A team that spanked Florida by 40, they beat 19 to nothing. You got a case, yep. Priester, no gain. Fired up Shane Burnham from middle linebacker. ESPN2 proud to bring you the 52nd Grey Cup tomorrow at 6.30 Eastern. Toronto led by league MVP Doug Flutie. Remember him? He returns to the Cup for the first time since 91. Montreal making its 19th Grey Cup appearance. Counters with receiver Darren Flutie. It's the CFL's best. Only on the deuce tomorrow at 6.30. Second and nine. Green on a roll, pump fake, did not see who was bearing down behind him for the sack. And he paid the price. John Abraham, fourth sack, the top figure for the game pack defense this year. Well, the assumption is when you roll to your left, there's no way that this man can get there, right? Wrong. Take a look at the speed of number 95. Abrams comes from behind and strips the ball, almost gets it free. You know, you have to make the assumption from the backside you can't get caught by a defensive end, but this is what they're going to more and more. You've got 220, 230 pound defensive ends that can run. That describes Abraham, true freshman from Timmonsville, South Carolina. Almost stripped the ball from Green. Loss of three. Shotgun on third and 12 to the side. And Crooks makes the catch, and he's going to have the first down. Wow. First catch tonight for Kenya Crooks. Green picked the right time to make a good throw. He's only looking at one guy, and that's Kenya Crooks, who slides down and makes the catch. Outstanding catch by Crooks, but a pretty good throw by Green, who delivered it in a spot that only Crooks could get it. 
Both these quarterbacks uh, are, are not going to enjoy looking at their numbers in the top and made some clutch deliveries. We also have to figure that right there, Wally Burnham's got to be frustrated. He had exactly what he wanted. He had third and 13 with a quarterback who had struggled up to this point. An injured player on the field for South Carolina. I believe that's Wiggins. Lee Wiggins, cornerback. Has to go all the way across the field to get to his bench. He's been on a couple of big plays this evening. He has been a block kick specialist throughout his career. Seven block kicks in his first two years, none this year. His coach says uh, that really the only thing that's held it back are the rule changes. I got it made it a little bit easier yeah. for the snapper, especially. Yeah. Well, I, I wish they'd have done that 20 years ago when I was snapping, but no. Brad Scott, you can sense a little frustration there. He thought they had him there third and 13, but Green delivers on the money and keeps the drive alive for the Tigers. No tight end, three wide receivers. High formation, option pitch, Priester. Run out after maybe a yard. South Carolina has defensed that option very well this evening. They go with the two wide receivers to the right, anticipating that they can go weak side, but they cannot. The pursuit of South Carolina outstanding. You know, with both these quarterbacks, as opposed to most of the time we've seen the option run this year, it is a true option, and you actually have to consider the threat of the quarterback keeping, which seems to be less and less the case when they run the option around college football. The running and effectiveness, though, for both quarterbacks has been from the pocket. Off the play fake, Green got a step around trouble. Now running for his life. All that for a gain of one yard. Run down by the ultra quick linebacker, Benji Young. Well, Benji Young is able to pursue him, but Burnham, among others, should have had the play. Play action fake. Now he's going to roll to his right. Right there, he's able to make the juke. He's able to get away from Burnham. In fact, he's going to get away from Burnham twice. Now Burnham gets up. I can get him. No, he misses him twice. Now Green comes back, and as you pointed out, great speed on the part of number 49, Benji Young, to drop him down. Now once again for Clemson, third and long. Third and eight. Green was on target last time. Hurried again. Down at the 35, and Burnham didn't miss this time. Third time's the charm. First two times he couldn't get him out. The third time he finally is able to drop him. And the question I have to be asking here on this particular drive, what happened to Raymond Priester? Neelan Green, you can see, first is forced out of the pocket by the rush by number 95, John Abraham. He forces him out, and Burnham is able to get him by the shoelaces. Pretty happy about it. Hey, Dad, what do you think of me, huh? Not bad. Ten-yard loss the side of Laird's foot it's a bit of a hop and out of the 29 yard line punt travels 35 11 34 to go at Clemson Death Valley not a real happy place at the moment because the Gamecocks have a three-point lead they take over at the 28 yard line first and ten Two tight ends, extra blocker for Staley, who is tripped up at the line of scrimmage. By Anthony Simmons to Mike Adamley we go. Dave and Todd, Alabama, of course, trying to earn a spot in the SEC championship game by winning the West. They're on their way. Freddie Kitchens to Michael Vaughn. Touchdown. The Tide leads 17-0. 332 to left to go in the first. Guys? Much better pass than the last one we saw Freddie Kitchens throw last week, but he's recovered, evidently. Great start tonight for the Tide. First time both those teams entered that game off a loss in 14 years. They fake right, wanting to go deep, hangs it up for... This is the advantage that you have with a big body. The coverage isn't that bad. In fact, you could argue that it might have been, it might have been interference on the part of Peter Ford, but at 6'4", 209, big man is able to separate himself from the defender and make the big catch. 47-yarder. Hambrick, run out at the three. 19 for number 19. Giving Staley a breather. 
Gamecocks look to add to a three-point lead. Once again, the offensive line of South Carolina assertive. Simmons just is right in the hole, but he can't make the play, and the result is Hamburg is able to cut to the outside. And as you pointed out, big man gives them an opportunity to change things up. 220-pounder, he can run through some people. First down and goal to go. Hambrick, only man in the backfield, takes the give straight up the middle and turned away just as he noses toward the goal line by Trevor Price. You know, you're the one that called it earlier in the game. You mentioned the fact that his percentage may not be good. We're talking about right here. But when he does deliver, he can deliver some beauties. That was close to 60 yards in the air, and it was right on the money. Robinson is the great target for the deep ball, too. He hadn't caught that many. 19 catches coming in, but 24 yards per catch. Well, that one will cer that'll certainly help his average yeah. per catch, too, won't it? About double it. Wright's numbers, not that impressive, but he's got him in position to pull a fairly big upset. Second down and goal from the one. Hambrick, touchdown. Pounder. I tell you what, he needs welding glasses for how bright his future is. Love it. Four ten point lead. Well, that's a bright future. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> New Staley full of thanks. It's 27-17 Gamecocks. On the sideline, they smell the upset. Long way to go, though. Better than nine minutes. 27 to 17, the largest lead for either team tonight. One of the things that you and I talked about, despite the fact that, that, Car that Carolina had lost the last two weeks, playing against Tennessee and Florida certainly had to gird them up. They're used to going against a high level of athlete. They are really poised to do as well as they're doing this evening. And boy, that's a big mistake there, giving them some field position by kicking the ball out of bounds. They had been uh, using Florida to kick off. That time it was Levitt. As uh, the ankle of Deuce Staley, most prized body part in Columbia at the moment, got some work. Here's the key play of the drive. Take a look, play action. Sits back, rocks, waits, waits, and then throws. Look at that. Look at that. Nearly 60 yards in the air. Marcus Robinson makes the catch, stumbles forward. Huge play for Carolina, and certainly the key play of that drive. The Tigers from their 35, down 10. Green throws that one into the grass in front of Smith. Excellent job by the Carolina defense as we take a look at the second half possessions. They went with the double screen. They were not fooled. They have not thrown a screen pass tonight, and South Carolina's waiting on it. Interception, field goal, and two punts. Carolina's really, I almost said risen the occasion. Glad I did Played come on. real good in the second half. <laughs> Been on a cliche roll. Oh, right. come on. <laughs> Outgained by the Gamecocks in the second half, 159 to 46. Most adjustments by that man, Wally Drummond, at halftime. Second and 10. Green overthrows Kenya Crooks. It'll be third and 10. Let's go down the pan. A lot of attention being paid to Deuce Staley's right ankle. He twisted it just a little bit, but the assistant trainer says that Staley will try to play again. A lot of people looking, and after Carolina scored that last, last touchdown, guys, Staley put his hand to his neck and said, it's over, but there's still lots of time left, guys. Pam, one of the things is why they pay attention to Deuce Staley. I'm surprised here, Dave, that they're not giving Raymond Priest for the ball. There's nine minutes left the game, they're only down by 10. They have time. A couple of series in a row, he has not been featured. Short yardage, all Brian Wofford gets here on the little turn in and a quick three and out for the Tiger offense. Shane Burnham, who ended the last series with a sack, ends this one as well. And his dad, Wally Burnham, making all the right calls here in this situation, putting him in a chance, putting him in a chance to succeed and not get beat deep. That man has made, has, in the chess game, has made all the right moves thus far in the second half for the Gamecocks. And you make a good point. When that drive began, they had enough time needing two scores to use the ground game on at least one of them. Now when they get it back, that may not necessarily be the case. Much better kick by Laird. They're caught at the 22. 
by Bridges after 41 yards through the air. 8-13 to play. Tigers down 10. Death Valley, 27-17 Carolina. Dave Barnett, Todd J. Christensen, and Pam Ward. Total yardage. South Carolina with its domination in the second half. Less than 50 yards for Clemson. Struggling through the air. On the carry by Troy Hambrick, no gain. Runs right into Trevor Price. Now a question uh, resulting from, from Pam Ward's last report. She said Deuce Staley, when Hambrick scored the touchdown, turned around and said, it's over. Boy, he's smoking in more ways than one. If they play like that, if they play like it's over with this much time remaining, uh, they may be in for a shot. Well, inevitably what happens is that you think you're up 10 points, about seven and a half minutes remaining here in the game. You can do that. You can see that Wright is taking his time, trying to bleed all the time off the clock, but he can. It's too early for that. Faked it to Hambrick and fires that one in the general area of Trevon Matthews. I'm surprised there only because of the fact that I'm saying that if I'm up like this in the way they've been running the ball, I'm going to run the ball three times, and even if we don't get the first down, I'm going to at least going to take off a minute and a half or a minute 40 in the game as Trevor Price is injured on the play. They don't want more than a play or two without him. Now, Trevor Price, if you recall, early in the game in the very first series had one and a half sacks and looked like a house of fire. Since then, we haven't called his name that often. Look at him as their next Chester McLaughlin or Bridge Perry. He'll be back for one more year. After transferring from Michigan, third and nine. Draw, and it's Hambrick in the clear. One man chasing him from behind. Good decision right there. Great cut. Touchdown. 75 yards. And it may very well be over. A very predictable call by South Carolina, but Clemson is not prepared for it. Drop play to keep the clock running. Great blocks at the point of attack. Now when he gets into the secondary, he knows the man is chasing him. He feels him right there. Right as he feels like Abdullah might get him, now he makes the burst right there. And that throws Abdullah off stride. He can't catch up to him now. Hambrick, great instincts for runner. 75 yards for the freshman boy. Oh, boy, that's a happy young man. That might be over. Levitt to the point. 34-17, Carolina. Take a look at the blocks by the South Carolina offensive line. They have been opening the holes all night for the tailbacks. Did you see that gap right there in the middle? Good blocking downfield at the point of attack. Now Abdullah tries to chase him down. Hamburg might take a little brief for this in the films. And you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That outside back was coaching. No, no, no. I knew he was there. I was teasing with him. And right there, I'm posting him with the Superman jump. <laughs> Troy Hambrick now, 128 yards on 11 carries. The man he backs up, Deuce Staley, 129 yards on 20 carries. One-two tandem, one of the best. Offensive coordinator John Eason all smiles, as well he should be. And Hambrick with all the congratulations that he deserves. A little quieter on Tommy Westfin. I think that the bowl people, particularly the independents, will have to be very impressed with what they've seen here. Not only with Hambrick and Deuce Staley, but an exciting quarterback and right. Robinson, exciting wide receiver, and of course the defense. They have some tough people on that South Carolina side of the defense. I, I certainly, if I'm a bowl person, got to consider this team. Well, the independents has a representative here, so he's all eyes, no doubt. Short kick return to the 39-yard line. And with three kickers, you think you'd get a little bit better than that. Reed Morton taking a turn that time. Now, Clemson uh, may be headed to the Peach win or lose. It's still a very scrambled picture in the SEC. Uh, the ACC representative, a little bit clearer to read. The ACC gets its third choice to the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. The SEC has uh, choice number four. Right now, all they're thinking about is how can they avoid 
again losing to Carolina at home. This would make six years in a row for the visitors to win in this series. Green, though, with a huge run on the quarterback keeper to the 47 of Carolina, good for 14 yards. The running backs for South Carolina, as you pointed out, the numbers outstanding. And Hambrick's average per carry, look at that. That's over 11 yards per carry for Hambrick, and of course a lot of that due to that 75-yard scamper. But the impressive part of it really has been Staley. Coming back from that injury, who knows? You know, your confidence isn't there. You haven't been hit in the longest period of time for him to come out and get a 100-yard game. Just outstanding. Tom, we just saw a note for those of you who are paying attention to the bottom line that will send some shockwaves out of Alabama. Green will again keep. No, pulls up. Might have been past the line of scrimmage. It's incomplete. He was very close to the line of scrimmage. Bottom line note, we just showed you Gene Stallings is expected to announce his resignation following the nice game with Auburn. Wow. Not been a good week in Tuscaloosa after their loss and the way they lost to Mississippi State last week. Even so, that would be a fairly major surprise. Gamecock fans, few though they may be in Death Valley, have six and a half minutes still to sweat out. Clemson has not lost at home all year. They're in big trouble here. Stretching, incomplete, intended for Crooks. Ben Washington timed his coverage perfectly. If Washington was looking for the pick, he might have been able to come up with it. But watch him play center field and come over. He sees open on the fade just a little bit long, and he says, no, you're not going to hang on to that ball. Pow! Good job of playing center field. And Washington comes over and wants to deliver the blow. If you're going to catch it, I'm going to make you pay for it. Even if you don't, I'm going to administer some pain. Third and ten. Carolina 40% converting third downs. And they will use their first timeout of the second half. Running out of time. Down by 17. Six and a half to play. The tight head coach expects to announce his resignation following the Auburn game. That is the report we have out of Birmingham. In the general area of the sideline, what a catch by Kenya Crooks. He brought it in, 24 yards, and the drive stays alive for Clemson. Short corner in between the zones. You can see he's going to follow his man underneath. Get behind the corner. You can see the zone. There's the dead spot right there. Green able to find it. Crooks reach back and makes a nice catch. Takes another punishing hit from Washington, but he's able to hang on. Last two years in this rivalry, the team that's controlled the fourth has controlled the scoreboard. Last year it was 17 all headed to the fourth quarter. Clemson had 21 unanswered points and won it 38-17. They hope for a repeat performance here. Priester takes the swing pass. Out of bounds near the 10. Good for 14 more yards. A name we haven't called very often here in the fourth quarter. Their main man, as you pointed out, had rushed for an awful lot of yards in the first half. But then for some reason in the third, third and fourth quarters, he was not utilized. Of course, now down 17, they're going to have to throw the ball. But, you know, one of those things that I'm sure the offensive people, Clemenson, will second-guess themselves when they take a look at the films tomorrow. Mike Robbins into the game. Top of your picture, wide right, along with Brian Wofford. Woods and Crooks are wide left. Lone setback is Priester. Shovel pass. Read well by Benji Young. No game. Well, South Carolina had come with a blitz on the inside, and of course, in that situation, that's not going to be as effective. All the lanes are covered by South Carolina people. There's the young man that has had an outstanding night tonight. You just saw Benji Young, sideline to sideline. He's been ranging, making some plays. While it was still the kind of game where Priester could control it, he was almost unstoppable. 18 carries, 137 yards. Now, though, they've got a throw. Here comes Wofford slanting in all the way to the end zone. This is a play that they utilized on third down to little effectiveness. This time coming across underneath, South Carolina people are not as quick to come up. Good block there. You saw 
by number 75, Glenn Roundtree. And that opens the gates for the touchdown. Padgett's extra point is good. Wofford, a true freshman from Spartanburg. What a sprint career he had in high school there. Two-time 400-meter state champion in South Carolina. And twice a member of the football state championship team. Only 11 catches coming into this game. ESPN News, the newest member of the ESPN family, is television's most comprehensive sports news service with up-to-the-minute reports on all the breaking news from the world of sports. Call your cable operator or satellite provider to get ESPN News in your home today. Well, Dave, with 5.19 remaining in the game, I would have to think that this is onside kick time. Got to be. You got to have two more possessions. If you kick it deep and play field position, then you run the risk that two, three, four first downs later, there's no time for two drives. Certainly the key play of the drive was Kenya Crook's catch with the short corner. Take a look at it here. This is, this is not the play. This is where he gets whacked. But the play later right after that is the one where Crooks runs the short corner, sets him up with the catch, enabling Wolford to catch the flanker screen and go in for the touchdown. Now, interesting here as to where they might go. You can't miss the direction. They haven't put everybody on the one side just yet, so hard for us to tell. Now they blast it deep. How about that? Over the head of Cousin. I don't get that. Touchback. I don't either. It's a lot of confidence in your defense, as you can say. Well, it is a lot of confidence in your defense, but remember, you only have two timeouts remaining, so basically, here's a situation where South Carolina can run three straight plays with no effect, take off nearly two minutes of the clock, punt it away, give Clemson the ball at about their own 35, with three minutes remaining, having to score 10 points. That, that just doesn't make any sense to me. But then quantum physics doesn't either, so I, I, mean, I don't know. Roughly the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. Tiger fans on their feet. And they comprise about 80,000 of the 83,000 plus in Death Valley. Troy Hambrick spins and has about five yards. Quickly to Mike Adamley for an update. Well, Dave and Todd, we, of course, are standing by for part three of our college football triple header here on the deuce between Iowa and Minnesota. And moments ago, this was the scene at uh, the Metrodome, a very emotional Jim Wacker in his final game as head coach, hugging his players, a few tears. We will join that game in progress following your game, guys. Every bit of that is uh, absolutely genuine, too, from Jim Wacker. He says he will not coach again. Second and five for Carolina. Hambrick may lose one. Get a chance now to look at Kenya Crook's catch on the key play of the drive, the corner route. Take a look right here. He follows behind, goes to the short corner, able to get behind the zone, and he really does make an outstanding catch. Good concentration here. The ball thrown just a little bit behind, gets up in the air, makes the catch, takes the hit from Washington, but holds on. Brooks, I'd say that, that, that ball's not having the muted enthusiasm. He points the one finger up and goes, well, yeah, thanks, but we're behind. Absolute must stop now for the Tiger D on third and five, under four minutes. Right on a keeper. And they've got him for no game. Good call, though, by South Carolina. And now Clemson takes a timeout with 3.48 remaining. One timeout left for Clemson. Ten points down, 3.48 to go. That will kick, and you know the Tigers are going to bring some heat. Well, you thought they would. I thought they would. That and it's still a very poor punt with no pressure at all. Even takes a Tiger hop. Mercy to the 41-yard line. And they didn't rush Courtney Levin. Let's check in with Pam on the sideline. All right, Dave, about 83,000 fans at least back at the stadium here tonight at Frank Howard Field. Quite different than the first time these two teams met. It was 100 years and 11 days ago that South Carolina and Clemson first played. That was at the Columbia Fairgrounds before about 2,000 fans. They paid 25 cents a piece to get in. Cost you at least 100 times that to get in here now, Dave. Slant in, Joe Woods. He's got room up the middle. 
to the 25. Well, it's obvious that Tommy West knew something that we didn't with regards to his defense. The very scenario that I pointed out did play out. They went three times, 3.30 on the clock, but the punt was horrible, and now Clemson in excellent field position. They can get a quick touchdown very much back in this game. Shotgun for Green, sacked, ball is loose, but the Tigers fall on it at the 32. Maynard Caldwell from behind Green with the blind sack jarred the ball loose. Inevitably, one of the things that you happen, you talked about it earlier when Staley said this is over with. Defensively, sometimes you can get a little bit stagnant. You go with your prevent defense as they keep picking on things underneath. That man, Wally Burnham, has to change a few things up. Second and 17 for Wofford. Did he catch it in bounds? He did at the 10. Wow. Well, he must have really drunk his foot. From my, from my vantage point, it looked like he didn't get a foot down. Let's see. Catch? No, he didn't. He had just lifted his foot. Just lifted his foot as he made the catch. Take a look from the left. Watch the right foot come up. It's up in the air. Boy, that's... Clemson gets a break. That is now first and goal, Clemson. Green. Lots of time, now it breaks down. He spots somebody open at the 10. It's Priester, touchdown. Green has struggled tonight, but all of a sudden, starting to take on some Joe Montana. Padgett's extra point. Whoa. 34-31. Now take a look here. He's looking at one man right here as the corner. Now watch if we can slow it down right at the end. Watch the possession and where the foot is. Watch the catch. There's the catch, the right foot's up, and it's out of bounds. And look, the ball is up in the air right there. He never had control of it. But the official gave him a completion, and the result here is Neyland Green doing what he does best. He buys time, he avoids the sack, scrambles around, puts pressure on the secondary, gets the ball to Priester, who is not accounted for, and the 230-pounder just bowls his way into the end zone. And that is the score of choice tonight, the dive. Well, now we're looking at a situation where Clemson has one timeout, 247 remaining. You know here that they're going to kick it deep. They don't have a reason to kick it onside because of the way their defense has reacted. South Carolina now has to gird themselves up offensively. And now when Deuce Stanley said it was over, I'm beginning to think it was over for him because we haven't seen him since. Hamburg has been in every series. Be interesting to see now if they go with Staley because here's a great opportunity for Clemson to not just kick it in the end zone, but kick it deep. South Carolina has their hands team up and the gap from the 45 back to the receiver is a big one. Clemson can put themselves in some excellent field position here if he doesn't kick it all the way into the end zone. He pops it up, that's a good decision. Perry Cousin, under it at the 20. Return to the 28. 2.43 to go. The Tiger defense needing another three and out. They have one timeout left. Brad Scott, coach slash, even though he's not technically the offensive coordinator, you have to know that he's going to be making all the calls. He played the drive, of course, is, is this corner. We're, we're giving it to you ad nauseum for a reason, not just because of the right foot that comes up, but at the end of the play, whether or not he completely had possession. The right foot is up in the air when he makes the catch, and there's the ball right there. It's out. But nope. the official, as you see, was looking at the spot on the field and didn't see him juggle But, re but regardless, that's right. not a completion. Right. Rick, it shouldn't have been, but the Tigers use it to get within three. Hambrick remains the tailback. Struggles for maybe two. Raheem Abdullah, who's had a big night. Well, now, now you've got to think that this is the biggest drive of the year for South Carolina and who's, who do you want the ball, whose hands do you want it in, Deuce Staley? He's now checked in. Yeah, okay. One time out left with 2.15 in count. Just saw him. Deuce Staley in the game.
game at tailback. Set out a couple of series. Under two minutes. Toss to Deuce. Left side is empty. And he loses a yard. Abdullah ranging sideline to sideline for another tackle. Quickly to the studio and Mike. The game between Iowa and Minnesota underway. Dave and Todd. Minnesota trying to win one for Coach Wacker. Getting some help from Iowa. Brian Hurley misses this field goal attempt from 49 yards. It's still nothing, nothing early on. Guys? I'm not sure that Clemson shouldn't have taken a timeout right there because it took at least a good eight seconds to get back there. And now with 15 seconds left, if Wright is smart, he's going to bleed as much time as he can off here. He needs to go off the running play, force Clemson to call the timeout. Play clock at three as he gets the snap. Draw, Staley, only to the 34. And now the timeout with 107 to go. Now here's where the pressure lies. Levitt last time had an absolutely atrocious punt. He really needs here to at least get a 35-40 yard punt to put Clemson back to where they have to struggle to get into field goal position with no timeouts remaining. Now, question for you. The, the hockey equivalent of this would be pulling the goalie. Why do you so seldom see 11 on the line, no deep back? There's no way they can block 11 and go all out to block the punt. Well, certainly in this situation, I would concur with you if for whatever reason is that Levitt has struggled as mightily as he had. As you pointed out, as you saw right there in the graphic, his last punt was 17 yards. Certainly, you think that you're going to rush and put a little pressure on him, maybe shank it. And, and if he does shank it, of course, don't worry about the 5 or 10-yard roll. It's not as if he's going to kick it into a run that's going to roll 40 yards. But that, in answer to your question, is the reason why. Well, I knew there had to be an answer. But you hardly ever see it. South Carolina led 34-17 before a stirring comeback by Clemson. Do they have enough time, though, to force overtime and maybe even win it in regulation? Carolina hanging by a thread to what they hope is a bid to the Independence Bowl. Better kick by Levitt with no pressure at all. There caught by McLeon at the 28-yard line, a 38-yard kick, a 101 remaining on the clock for the Tiger offense, which is out of timeout. And Clemson basically here needs to get 42 yards to get into field goal position. As you pointed out, the kicker for Clemson, his longest is 48. That would get him to the 30-yard line for a 47-yard kick. Now the soul has left F. Allen. Standing room plus tonight. Priester is the setback with four wide. Green with time batted down by Taylor. Henry Taylor, the defensive tackle with 57 seconds. How many times do we see it in college, pro, high school, whatever, football? Team has struggled to throw the ball. Now all of a sudden in a prevent situation, as you pointed out, two quick touchdowns for Clemson very much in this game. The pressure certainly lies on the South Carolina defense to do something to shake things up because what drives you crazy is when you have that active quarterback, Neil Green, who can scramble out and create a big play out of nothing. Steps away from the pressure, decides to fire, almost ran past the line of scrimmage. He was past the line of scrimmage. And I they saw, did throw the flag. And You're the right. referee followed him. That's a great job by that official. The referee ran right up to the back of the quarterback green to see where he was when he threw the ball. That's a great, great hustle on the part of the official. He was close one other time tonight. They didn't call it. And I thought they wouldn't call it here, but at the last second, the flag did come down. Take Take a look at Bill. Watch him right there. Take a look at Bill Goss. He's going to run right up. Now look what he takes a look at. He looks at the yard marker. Bill Goss drops the flag. That's an excellent job by the official being right on top of things. I, I like to see that. I like to see people that are going to hustle and be sure of the calls. And a loss of down. It'll be third down. What really hurts, the loss of down. Third and a long 13 from the 25-yard line. Take a look at the short corner route. That's been the big route for them thus far here in the fourth quarter. Green now has time. Fires caught by Woods. First down, and he got out of bounds. Or Crooks makes the catch. Good for 11 yards for Kenya Crooks. Kenya Crooks has been the big man coming up with the catches. 
No one checking him at the line of scrimmage. Good comeback route. And he knows where the marker is. Gets both feet down. Troop gave him a little bit too much room. 44 seconds. Same set every time. Four receivers and Priester is the setback alongside Green. Green stepping up, feels the heat. Over the middle, caught at the 43. Joe Woods on this catch, 18 yards. Padgett getting ready perhaps to send this one to overtime. 36 seconds as they move the chains. Of course, they stop the clock, but they've reached Gamecock territory. Well, now South Carolina has to take a timeout because they only had 10 guys in the field. Boy, oh boy, that is costly. What a break for Clemson. They only had 10 guys in the field. Wally Burnham can't be very happy about that. Clemson needing at least 10 more yards. They have a prayer of a field goal to tie it. And Green has wide open spaces inside the 25 to the 20 and out of bounds with 22 seconds. A 23-yard keeper. Clemson well within Matt Padgett's range now. Now the question for Clemson is, do we take a shot at a touchdown? Nalen Green has been the big-time star here in the fourth quarter with his arm and his legs. All of the white shirts on the other side of the field. Green able to cut against the grain out the 20-yard line with 22 seconds left. What to do? I try that again. Fires for the sideline at incomplete, intended for Mal Lawyer. Good coverage on the part of Benji Young. Now, Clemson has to decide with 17 seconds left, do we take a shot at the end zone? Because if for whatever reason now, if Neyland Green, who has the penchant for scrambling, scrambles out and gets tackled in the field of play short of the first down, this game could be over. Then Padgett might not have time to run on the field and attempt one. If they don't make another yard, it's a 37-yarder. His best of his career was in the last game against the Wolfpack, 48 yards. Also a great opportunity for a blitz here if they can get a sack. Late blitz. Green fires over the middle. Incomplete with 11 seconds. For Chris Robbins, who had a hand on it. Chris Robbins, the reserve quarterback. Take a look at the coverage. Throwing across his body. Good block there on the part of Priester, knocking things off. Take a look at the end of the play. Washington tries to go around and make the play. That's a good non-call by the official. Robbins wants the call, but he's not going to get it. And well, they're, they're not going to yep, go wait. Field goal unit comes on for Clemson, and it will be. Padgett to try to send it to overtime from 37 yards, but first of all, the Gamecocks oh. will ice him with a timeout. Boy, you know what? That's a bad decision, and here's why. They had six seconds remaining on the play clock. There's no way that they could have got that field goal off in that period of time. South Carolina should have just let it happen because people run out of the field. They made a late decision with regards to the field goal. That would have pushed them back to 42. The people on the field and Wally Burnham should have been cognizant of that. They gave Clemson a big break. Matt Padgett is a freshman. And even if he had been a senior in this position, I don't know if there's any preparation for it, really. No, there really is. Because isn't. all you're talking about is uh, the entire state being either on your back or patting you on the back for an entire year. Goal post 37 yards away. No breeze whatsoever. Padgett on the year. Seven of nine. Well, this is a good decision on the part of, of Clemson because you'd argue even if he is back there, even if he gets the first down, even if all those things go well, he's got to hustle up, spike the ball, and you don't know if that can happen in 11 seconds on the 20-yard line. This is a good decision on the part of Tommy West. For overtime, no good. Hooked it. One streak ends, another continues.
For Clemson, it's going to be the end of their five-game winning streak. And in the series, six wins in a row by the visiting team. Snap is good. The hold is good. Padgett's plant. He just hooks it a little bit. South Carolina going all out, but they don't get it. Hooks it just, just left. He misses it by about two feet. And take a look at the reaction of Coach Brad Scott. Happiest man in the field, arguably. Wright takes a knee, and it is over, and South Carolina has walked through the Valley of Death again and come away a winner. So for Todd Christensen and Pam Ward, Dave Barnett saying so long from Clemson with a final score again. South Carolina wins it 34-31.